ESPN on ABC. Welcome everyone to Truist Field on a gorgeous fall afternoon here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Site of a top 25 battle today between the fifth ranked Clemson Tigers and number 21, the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. DJ Uyunglele and Clemson arrive, riding the nation's longest winning streak, nine in a row. Meanwhile, Wake Forest has won 11 straight here on its home field. The last loss here to Clemson in 2020. This is the ACC on ESPN. This could be the most important conference game of the year. And it's the ESPN College Football presentation on ABC presented by Arby's. And here come the Demon Deacons. Hi, everybody, and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough along with Todd Blackledge. We'll be joined momentarily by Molly McGrath. Delighted to have you with us. Todd, a year ago, Clemson was 10 and 3. At most places, they celebrate. At Clemson, it was a down year. Their six year run as ACC champs over. Uh, how do you size up this year's team? Well, I'll tell you what, they're used to being in the college football playoff, and I think they got a great chance of going back there this year. They're much healthier as a team, and their quarterback, DJ Uyunglele, is a different cat this year. He's carrying less weight and more confidence and making big time plays as a thrower and a runner. Well, Clemson, 10 wins a down year. At Wake Forest last year, they won 11. Yeah. That tied the school record. They played for the ACC championship. Dave Clawson in his eighth year thinks this is his most talented team, but they've lost 13 in a row to Clemson. They're talented enough, especially here at home, to play with and maybe beat Clemson, but it's critical they do three things that they've not done well against Clemson. Number one, they got to get off to a fast start. Number two, they have to give their quarterback, Sam Hartman, time to throw because they match up well in the throw game and they've got to take care of the football. Since Dave Clawson has been here, if they win the turnover margin, they win 84% of the time. That's an important number for sure. Louis Ungolale, Will Shipley, who's off to a great start at running back. And for Wake Forest, history making quarterback Sam Hartman. The opening kickoff down from BT Potter to Donovan Green. And he returns for Wake Forest to the 25. Clemson won the toss and deferred, so Dave Clawson elected to take the opening kickoff from Potter. So here comes the Wake Forest offense, led by Sam Hartman, who missed their first game after surgery to remove a blood clot in his left shoulder. Played in the last two and has played very well, especially last week in their win over Liberty when he threw for 325 yards. Got him to 98-91. Number one all time in Wake Forest history, passed Riley Skinner with that performance last week, his 79 TD passes the school record as well. Making his 36th career start, he swings it out quickly to Taylor Marin. And nice run after the catch. He got slammed out of bounds. They want a flag on the sideline for a late hit out of bounds right in front of Dave Clawson. It was K.J. Henry with, they felt, a little extra polish. A uh, big game for K.J. Henry. He's from Winston-Salem. His dad was a, an assistant coach at Wake Forest. On the delay, Justice Ellison, and he gets some push for the first down. Sam Hartman, 23 years old, 22 and 13 as their starting quarterback in his career. And they will go at a very fast tempo today. And a veteran offensive line that returned all five starters from last year. Hartman out of the flat. Marin. Could not break a tackle, but he got very close to another first down at the 46-yard line. The safety, R.J. Mickens, made the stop. Well, much different start for Wake Forest than their first possession in Clemson a year ago. Four sacks early in that ball game. Ellison has the first down. Well, last year in that game you've referenced, Todd, a couple of times, Wake Forest ran for only 36 yards on 31 carries. Warren Ruggiero, their offensive coordinator, said, we have to run the ball today. They will lean primarily on the passing game, particularly the deep throw, which they throw with regularity. Hartman 
Couldn't find an open receiver. Got a gain of about two, then got blasted by Trenton Simpson. Second down at eight. Harbin starts the day needing 109 passing yards for 10,000 in his career. He'd be the ninth quarterback in the ACC to do that. Nothing doing on that run for Justice Ellison. And here comes third down at almost 10. Peyton Page the stop. This is where you don't want to be against this Clemson defense. Take a look at the rush yards last week. Louisiana Tech a lot of big plays, but third and 10 is right in the wheelhouse for Clemson. They bring pressure. Hartman given some time looking for the tight end and it's batted around and incomplete. They have an excellent tight end in Blake Whitehart. Crowd thought there was pass interference. R.J. Mickens had the coverage Trenton along Simpson. with Trenton yeah. Simpson. Simpson was right there and actually got a hand on the football. That's a tough throw to make in between two defenders. Credit Trenton Simpson for being in good position. Well, you said it. Dave Clawson said yesterday we can't be in third and long. Ivan Moore, their third year starting punter, had one blocked last week against Liberty. And that one is off the side of his foot. Not a good kick, although it gets a nice bounce. Down inside the 12 yard line. 36 yard punt. DJ Uyunglele and the Clemson offense on the field when we come back. We're back in Winston-Salem. There's the view from the AT&T 5G Skycam. DJ Uyunglele slimmed down, lost about 30 pounds from a year ago when he struggled. Dabo Sweeney said it wasn't just him. We struggled everywhere on offense, but as you see, the completion percentage up by 9%, the passing yards per game up significantly. Playing with more confidence. And starting from his own 12, the first Clemson possession of the game. Will Shipley rips right through the middle. And he's down inside the 40 yard line. Malik Mustafa, Shipley's high school teammate, able to run him down and save a touchdown. Well, both linebackers were so wide and widened out even with the snap of the ball, and that left a huge hole. This offensive line for Clemson may be the best they've had in the last four or five years. Very physical and a great first play there. What a start. 53-yard run for Shipley. He's had two rushing touchdowns in each of the first three games. Now a screen, and that one well defended. Shipley dumped immediately by Chase Jones, a linebacker. There are the numbers for Shipley, as we mentioned. Two touchdowns in each of the first three games. Clemson's records go back to 1950. He's the first man to do that. They're still trying to research deeper back. Player spotlight brought to you by Champion. Clemson going at a quick pace. Shipley tripped up for a loss. Nice penetration by Rondell Borthroyd. When we talked yesterday to Brad Lambert, the defensive coordinator, about who played well for you so far, he said Bothroyd has been a standout. Yeah, he's really good at both the run and in rushing the passer. He's a nice combination. And that's two plays behind the line of scrimmage in a row for this Wake Forest defense. Under Brad Lambert, much more aggressive and attacking. Leads the tackles for loss. Lambert, first year as the defensive coordinator, came from Purdue. Lots of time for Uwe Youngalove. Throws it deep into single coverage, and it is incomplete, but there's a flag down. Joseph and God of the intended receiver, and Gavin Holmes had the coverage. Jeff Heeser is the referee leading this ACC crew. Gavin Holmes is a talented guy, but there you see the grab on Engada. Now, last week, Liberty went after him early, and they got two defensive pass interference penalties in a row on him. And Clemson, on their first third down play, does the same thing, goes after Gavin Holmes and draws the DPI. And that surprised Dave Clawson last week. His homes had been outstanding in the first two games, but Liberty clearly went after him. 
Anthony Pelley's on back-to-back -back plays. He came out for a couple of plays. Along the far sideline, Jake Brenningstool, one of their tight ends. So an impressive opening drive for Clemson. Shipley's 53-yard run on the first play from scrimmage is a career long and the longest run of this season for any Tiger player. Shipley's really a fun guy to watch. I mean, he's a great combination of power and speed, and he's just kind of feisty. He's one of the real leaders, a vocal guy, plays with a lot of emotion. Power and speed in the person of Shipley, who's tripped up, submarine by Chalen Garns, the safety. This is where if you're Brandon Streeter, offensive coordinator, you got a great luxury of the combination of Shipley and DJ as a runner on third down and short in the red zone. And it's Shipley for the first down. Inside the 11-yard line. Shipley's a sophomore last week against Louisiana Tech. Averaged 11.6 yards per carry as he rushed for 139 yards. Averaging 13 and a half per carry on this opening drive with the big one, the 53-yarder. Looked like a false start there against Clemson. False start. Offense. In the 78. On First down. Wake Forest was lucky because they were confused defensively. They were trying to get situated. And Clemson bailed them out with the false start penalty. By the true freshman right tackle, Blake Miller. 6'6", 315 from Strongsville, Ohio. That seems appropriate. <laughs> so first and 15 now. Quarterback draw, Uli Ungalale, even slimmed down to about 230 pounds. A powerful runner. Took on Dion Bergen. You know, it, it was well chronicled that he struggled at times last year, had to overcome a lot of adversity. But I'll tell you what, one thing that, that made it difficult, this offensive line, they had seven different offensive line combinations in 13 games last year. That's tough for any quarterback. He played much better the second half of the season. Same five offensive linemen now starting for the fourth game in a row. That didn't happen at all last year. Uwe Young away, given all kinds of time by that line. Running out of it now, throws, caught! Touchdown, Jake Brenningstool! This is just a really nice job of DJ not panicking. He doesn't have anything early. He waits as long as he can. He doesn't panic or leave the pocket, and then finds his tight end in the back of the end zone and puts the ball in a place where only his guy could come down with it. His first touchdown of the season, second of his career for the sophomore from Brentwood, Tennessee. A nice tight end duo with Davis Allen. B.T. Potter, the extra point. And Clemson off to a 7-0 lead. Molly on what has been a very emotional week for the Tiger football program. Yeah, Sean, it's been a difficult and life-altering week for Clemson defensive tackle Brian Brzee and his family after his 15-year-old sister Ella lost her 18-month battle against brain cancer on September 15th. Ella was and still is an inspiration to the entire Clemson community. She spoke with the team just days before her passing, and Coach Dabo Sweeney said her strength and joy for life changed this group of young men. And on Tuesday, with teammates and coaches by his side, Brzee and his family laid Ella to rest during her funeral in Maryland. This unwavering support is why Brian Brzee felt comfortable returning to the football field so quickly after his sister's death. And the entire Brzee family is in attendance today. They shared an embrace with Brian before the game, and Ella's impact is everywhere today, and it's still felt by this community. Indeed it is. Pre-game today, parents Rich and Megan, sisters Kendall and Bailey here. Now, it's so tragic. You can't even imagine that with the family, but uh, the close family all here together and the Clemson football family is a close family as well. This time it'll be a touchback on the kickoff by B.T. Potter, and Dabo Sweeney spoke so passionately, eloquently at one of his press conferences earlier this week after they had been to the service on 
Tuesday about what a great example Ellis set. Brave, optimistic, cherishing every day, and that's a message that he has tried to impart to his team. Yeah, and just the fact that you just you just never know. You know, you never know how many days you have, how much life you have. Live it to the fullest. Do the right thing. Treat people the right way. And, and Ella exemplified that, you know, and it's a lesson for all of us. And on first down, a loss. Taylor Marin dumped for a loss. Behind the line of scrimmage, Toriano Pride, a true freshman, will mark it at the line of scrimmage. Second and ten for Sam Hartman, down seven to nothing. And an errant pass behind Jamal Banks. Yeah, he had two guys open there, and that time Sam Hartman just inaccurate with the football. His feet kind of got him in trouble. And once again, now another third and long. And interesting, because of some injuries to the Clemson secondary, they're playing with three linebackers. And Hartman has time again, throws far side, caught. But Looks like it's going to be short of the first down for A.T. Perry. It was close. I mean, it was close when he was first. Yeah, they're going to give him the 35 with. yard line yeah. and a first down. Wow. I think he made it past the sticks on the initial catch. Nice job coming back. Oh, that's no. close. That's really close. And yeah, they have to stop this one. On the field, it was a first down on that play. It was under field of you. Dabo Sweeney had that right in front of him on the far sideline. He'll come over, Jeff Heiser, to speak with the replay official, Mike Shepard. We'll sort it out when we come back. College football on ABC is presented by Arby's. Arby's, we have the means. While we were away, the announcement that they have changed the spot of the football. A.T. Perry, when he contacted the ball, did not have the line to gain the 35-yard line. They've spotted it about a half yard short. And Dave Clawson sends the punter on again, Ivan Mora. I don't know that you go for a fake here, but maybe they'll try to draw an offsides penalty with a hard count or a shift with their punt team on fourth and a half a yard. Clemson has blocked two punts already this year and three block kicks tied for Temple with the national lead. Nose up spiral will Taylor fair catch at the 25 yard line. Here's the first play from scrimmage Todd set up the touchdown drive. Well you see these linebackers widening out because they have to respect the running ability of the quarterback. Get a block at the point of attack, and then the speed of Shipley does the rest. Great way to start the offensive game for Clemson. Better field position this time. Shipley has happened in a big way. As their leading rusher last year as a freshman, more than 700 yards, and he missed three games due to injury. Quick slant after the play fake, and a diving catch made by Ngata. For 15 yards and another first down. Well, you just see DJ looks so different. I mean, he is confident, he's decisive, and because of that, he's way more accurate than he was a year ago. Take the film Moffa, of the defender fell down, and so did the receiver. There is a flag thrown. There was contact apparently near midfield. Personal foul, face mask, offense, number eight, 15-yard penalty, first down. Adam Randall, the highly touted true freshman, was the intended receiver in the penalties against him. Well, you're trying to get off of press coverage, and Randall did a little bit too much. Got his hand in the face mask. That's why the defender was on the ground. They both lost their balance, and the penalty goes against Clemson. Randall, the latest in a long line of top wide receiver recruits to come into Clemson. Well, 11 receivers drafted since 2013, tied with Ohio State for the most. Swing pass, Davis Allen with flags down. He's dropped for a loss. Malik Mustafa, who's had a terrific start to this season, the sophomore from Charlotte and a transfer from Richmond. 
holding offense number zero. Second down. That's Antonio Williams, the other freshman receiver they're very high on. So back to back plays the two touted freshmen with penalties. So far, Wake Forest doing a nice job defending those quick perimeter throws. And now a long yardage situation. If you're DJ, you're thinking just get some of this back on second down and a mile. Phil Moffa, the running back. DJ handed it off. And Moffa out to the 29-yard line. Tackled by Ryan Spenda and Chase Jones. Veteran linebackers for Wake Forest. Third down, 21, 6-10 to go. Opening quarter. Clemson up 7 to nothing. Juggling catch made by Brenningstool, who has the touchdown, and they get 30 on third down and 21. The Wake Force is only rushing three. I mean, they're only rushing three. They're trying to drop back and cover all the zones, but right down the seam, tight end sees it, looks back for the ball, and DJ makes the right choice again. Third down and long, you're not supposed to give that up if you're Wake Force defense. Uyunglele perfect so far. They march right down the field on the opening possession. And here they come again. Four man rush. They don't even get near him and the long ball is caught for a touchdown. Brandon Spector with Gavin Holmes in coverage. 41 yards. Dave Clawson said yesterday we have to get off to a good start. This is a nightmare. Well, Gavin Holmes went for the interception. The ball went through his arms into the hands of Brandon Spector and Clemson with a touchdown. It was man coverage. Gavin Holmes was in good position, but just couldn't catch the football. But an accurate throw again. DJ Uyunglele just looks so different in his confidence in throwing the football. E.T. Potter for the extra point. Spectre the touchdown, his first of the season. And the 41 yards is the longest catch of his career. What an impressive start for number five, Clemson, on the road. Not only has Clemson won 13 in a row, against Wake Forest. Most of them haven't been close. Almost 28 points, the average margin of victory under Dave Clawson. Wake Forest is 0-8, and there hasn't been a game closer than 14 points. What a start for DJ Uyunglele. Perfect. Seven for seven and two touchdowns. Potter's kickoff is a touchback. Here's Kevin Nagandi. Sean, good afternoon. Time now for a mayhem moment brought to you by Allstate to the big house. Maryland's Ty Felton got some issues on the opening kick here, Dan. Yeah, you got to get underneath it right there. Turns it over Michigan. Well, you want a fast start with your first big test of the year, and they got it. J.J. McCarthy, the Luke Schoonmaker, 7-0 Michigan, eight seconds in. Right now it's 7-3. Back to you. All right, Kevin, Coach Mullen. Here it's 40 to nothing, Clemson. The Tigers have already had three plays of longer than 30 yards. Wake hasn't had a play go longer than nine yards. They punt it twice. Sam Hartman launches it deep and incomplete. And there are flags down. Donovan Green extended one arm. He had the true freshman, Toriano Pride, in single coverage. That was a late Pass grab. Interference. Defense, number 23. 15-yard penalty, first down. The receiver had separation at the end of the route. Donovan Green, right there, he's got separation. And at the end, you're going to see a late grab on the right arm. And that withdrew the flag. Yesterday, when we talked to Wes Goodwin, he talked about these freshman corners he has. He likes them. He says they just can't panic when the ball's in the air. That's what happened right there. They will take a number of deep shots. There's a wide receiver screen, Keyshawn Williams. 
Upended by R.J. Mickens. Well, they have some injuries today in the secondary for the new coordinator, Wes Goodwin. Pride Colville Lucas thrust into action today with Andrew McCoob out, Malcolm Green. They're starting nickel, not playing. The ball is out, and it goes out of bounds. Ellison was the ball carrier. They'll send it back to the spot of the fumble, which is very near the first down marker. Well, we've already seen Trenton Simpson put his impact on the game. Very powerful outside linebacker, strips the ball. Wake Forest lucky to maintain possession, still third down and short. When we talked to Dave Clawson yesterday, he raved about Simpson. He said Clemson about as good as they've ever been in the defensive line, perhaps not as good as they've been, or at least not as experienced in the back seven. But Simpson is a standout. Look at this defensive formation. On third and short, the run fake. Pete throw, and they grab A.T. Perry. That defense, young in the secondary, but not Fred Davis, fooled by the fake. Rashawn, Clemson, look, all 11 defenders are right here. They're expecting run. And A.T. Perry's going to have single coverage, and they go play action, and he's beat from jump. I mean, he is beat right away and does the only thing he can do, which is grab to prevent a touchdown. Do you like that defense? No. <laughs> No, I don't, especially when you're beat up in the secondary. I think I, you're I inviting what just that. happened when you do that. Good one, of course, has taken over for Brent Venables. He went on to Oklahoma as head coach of the Sooners. They lost both coordinators. Tony Elliott, now the head coach of Virginia. Hartman steps up, throwing deep again. And it is gone for a touchdown. Jamal Banks beat Fred. For 36 yards. Dennis for the extra point. Okay. First year starting place kicker. He hasn't missed anything yet. Zach Murphy, the holder. One of the unique things about this offense, they call it the slow mesh. Watch the back and the quarterback. They're going to go right to the line of scrimmage. And at the last minute, Hartman will pull the ball out. But watch the back help right there on Brian, Brian Brzee. And that allows Hartman to have enough time to get the ball down the field to his best contested catch guy, Jamal Banks. One-on-one -on -one coverage again. Banks, excellent at going up and fighting for the football. But credit the back for helping on Brzee and Hartman just moving slightly in the pocket. But that slow mesh, it's a long fake. It's right by the line of scrimmage. You got to have some courage to stay in there and make the throw, and Hartman does. Dave Clawson said Sam Hartman needs help in protection, not just for the offensive line, but the running backs yep. and the tight ends. And that touchdown pass is the 80th of his career. He's now alone in seventh all-time in ACC history. Number one among Power Five quarterbacks, a tie with Jared Davey of Troy, with 80, most among active. FBS quarterbacks and touchdown passes. The kickoff is the touchback. Here's Kevin. Sean, reminding you, week four, early windows, plenty of action over on ESPN right now. Auburn up 14-0 against Mizzou. Iowa State Baylor through one quarter. They're tied up at seven apiece. Number one, Georgia up 9-3 against Kent State on the SEC Network Plus. ACC Network has Pitt doubling up Rhode Island. I want to remind you also, we'll have live look-ins from Yankee Stadium when Aaron Judge is up the bat in pursuit of home run number 61. Back to Sean, Todd, and Molly. All right. All right. Baseball fandom keeping an eye on the historic season Aaron Judge is having. Colby Pace, the ball carrier. Number two running back behind Will Shipley. And he had 191 yards against Wake Forest. And two touchdowns a year ago. They ran for 332 against Wake Forest a year ago at Clemson. Demon Deacons really haven't slowed them down at all. This time they do as Colby Pace. Collided with his own man, it seemed. Jordan McFadden, the left tackle, and now Pace is still down on the turf.
Mm. Almost got leg whipped by his own guy going through the uh, through the hole. But you wonder if it was the contact because it didn't look like there was much, or if he just injured himself on the cut. Junior from Cedar Town, Georgia. Good news is it doesn't look like he's walking all that gingerly as he heads off. Tough to tell there, yeah. but they're going to take a longer look at him. He went down at the 30, so can Wake Forest stop Will Shipley and the Tigers for the first time today? He's back in it, running back for third down at five. Bunch to the left, single coverage to the right. Will they pick on Holmes again? DJ looked in that direction, pulls it down, has the first down. We think the officials running right along the 35 yard line, it's just enough. DJ is an interesting runner to me. He's big and he's not shifty, but he makes guys miss. He has the ability with vision to see where defenders are and elude tacklers. He doesn't look fancy doing it, but he's an excellent runner because of his vision. Said he changed his diet significantly and eliminated sweeps. He's a different looking human being. He throws long and it's incomplete. Good coverage along the near sideline by J.J. Roberts on E.J. Williams. Yeah, he just continued to ride Williams to the sideline. There was no place to put the football. That's the way you want a cornerback to do it. If that receiver's not going to fight to stay in the field of play, just go ahead and run him right out. Will Shipley, the running back on second and ten. A backward pass, a lateral to Antonio Williams, chased down by Chase Jones, the junior from Warren, New Jersey, out of St. Peter's. Well, he talked to us yesterday. He said he lost 30 pounds, not just getting rid of sweets, portion control. Right. Said, I like to eat, don't we all? We know you do, taste of the town upcoming. Well, he looks he, he looks better and he's playing better and he's got a better and healthier supporting cast around him in front of him and on the outside too. He had a knee problem last year. He got rid of the brace. He said that's helped. He had a thumb injury last year. He throws and it is broken up intended for Spectre. And double coverage there. J.J. Roberts there again for the Demon Deacon to force a punt for the first time today. Really nice job. Watch Roberts. He's going to be in zone coverage, and he's going to peel off his man with eyes on the quarterback and get a collision at the football. That's a good job by the corner reading the eyes of the quarterback and then helping out to the inside. Nice possession that time for J.J. Roberts. Here's Aiden Swanson, their new punter, left-footed. Wobbly short kick and a fair catch made by Taylor Marin after a 37 yard punt. College football primetime tonight, right here on ABC. It's presented by Capital One. Coming your way from the horseshoe at 7 30, third ranked Ohio State taking on Wisconsin of the Big Ten opener for both teams. They haven't met, in fact, since the conference championship game back in. 2019 the Badgers are two and one they've lost nine in a row to the Buckeyes. Yeah it's, uh, that's a tall order in Columbus stopping that off and Jim Leonard one of the best defensive minds in college football the Badgers always play great D but it's a special offense. On the run tough run by Christian Turner. This offense is so intriguing to me, Sean. Not only the slow mesh stuff for the passing game, but even in the running game, the back doesn't hit the hole right away. He kind of waits, he waits, he chops his feet, and they find holes as it opens. It's just a very unique system that Warren Majero, Dave Boston started. And, uh, it's given them a chance to be really competitive, but it's, it's very unique. 
Christian Turner again. Plus then Ruggiero said we're not going to run for a bunch of yards. We're not going to run for 150 yards. We just have to run well enough to make them respect it to set up our passing game. Hartman too high off the hands of Marin on third down and six. So here comes Mora. Four possessions in the opening quarter for the Demon Deacons. This will be the third punt. Will Taylor back for it. Sophomore, two sport athlete, outfielder in baseball. He was a draft pick of the Texas Rangers. What little breeze there is is at the back of Moore. The temperature 69 degrees with very low humidity. Just a delightful day. That's a high booming punt. Taylor back to his 16, and it's beautifully covered by Wake Forest. Jalen Garns first there. We talk about this Wake Forest offense, a slow mesh, and when it works, you protect that area between the line of scrimmage and the quarterback. It's not a big distance. If you protect that area and keep it clean, they can hit you down the field. Same thing, even if you bring pressure, if the backs are alert and can help on the pressure, and the quarterback moves a little bit, you influence linebackers, you influence safeties, you open things up for the pass game. Where it doesn't work is if the pocket collapses and that space gets swallowed up. And Clemson historically has done a great job of that. Seven sacks of San Hartman last year. Shipley, a one yard gain and that's all. And when we asked Dave Plosson yesterday to amplify your point, Todd, about the keys to the game, he said that's number one. Yep. Their defense can't blow up our offensive line. And, and he recognizes this is an NFL caliber defensive front. And so far, I think they've done a nice job of holding their own. They've got to find a way to, to slow down this offense. Number one running back, Shipley, carried on first down. Now Moffa in the game. Often in there in passing situations, he blocked. Ooh, Ungalale lost the football at the 25-yard line. And Clemson got it back. Evan Slocum knocked it out. Again, the ability to make people miss, to see where tacklers are coming from, to put your foot in the ground and change directions. And he's a big body. I mean, ultimately, he's a big body. Clearly a fumble. Nice job by Kobe Turner knocking it out. That takes us to the end of the first quarter. Louis Ungalale, seven out of nine passing for both touchdowns. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC will return after this message and a word from our ABC station. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, celebrating the challenge of road games everywhere. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear more driven. Sean McDonough, Todd Blackledge, and Molly McGrath, truest field, home of the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. After one quarter, Clemson leads 14 to 7. They scored in their first two possessions, scoring in their opening possession for the eighth time in their last nine games. Shipley stood up after a short gain on first and ten. It was Ryan Smenda making his 40th career start for that Demon Deacon defense. Yeah, he missed the first game, had to sit out because of an ejection from a year ago in the bowl game. But since he's been back, a real leader, a fiery player, he's in there right now. The other linebacker in there, Dylan Hazen, also in the backfield, number 50. On second down, the catch made short of the first down. It's Bo Collins, about two yards shy of the line of the game. Molly. Bo Collins. We'll get to Molly in a moment. Bo Collins looks like an upper body injury somewhere around his right shoulder high school teammate of DJ Uyunglele for two years at St. John Bosco a powerhouse in the Los Angeles area yeah and he's really really come on 
become a consistent guy. He's really got a great work ethic, a pro approach to his business. And uh, another good throw by DJ. This looks like at the end of the play, landing on that shoulder. All right, Molly now will bring you in. Well, Sean, the injuries are piling up for Clemson's wide receivers as Kobe Pace was doubled over in pain after hobbling off the field. Athletic training staff heavily taped his left ankle, but when he ran on the sideline, he grimaced in pain. Now, Clemson doesn't reveal injury info, but his but Pace is definitely hurting. He's still trying to get back in there. Been running, dancing on that sideline ever since he left. Here's a big third down and two. Louis Young on the left. After the fake, throws too high for Brinningstool. Sean, that's a really hard play for a right-handed quarterback to come rolling to his left with pursuit and try to get his shoulders square. The only way you can be accurate throwing as a right-hander rolling to your left, you have to get the shoulders all the way square. Hard to do that when you're under pressure. That time, Ja'Cory Johns applying the pressure and the ball sailed on DJ. There's Aiden Swanson. Taking over from Will Spires, who punted for five years for Clemson. Pressure on Swanson, low kick. Bothroyd put the pressure on. Taylor Marin down at the 31-yard line. Here's a look at the Taco Bell Live Moss student section. Student sections across the country competing to be the Live Moss student section of the year all season long. Sean, we talked about what do they have to do, Wake Forest, to be in a position to win the game. Fast start, protect their quarterback, win the turnovers. No turnovers for either team yet. They have protected Sam Hartman. They did not get off to a fast start, but they've drawn themselves back into the ball game now in a one possession game. Reminiscent of last year when they struggled to start, and down goes Hartman. Back at the 20 yard line, Tyler Davis. Back in action with a big sack. Yeah, Tyler Davis did not play last week. Watch this just quick inside move. He's going to beat the guard and just gets right to the quarterback. And when that pressure comes from the inside, it's very difficult. Sean McGinn, one of those veteran linemen. They're going to keep launching bombs. That one's too deep. Over the head of A.T. Perry. Dave Clawson says this is the best and deepest receiver group. He said one through five yeah. at wide receiver. We have a lot of talent. And that is a big feature of their offense. They're going to throw a lot of deep balls. They've got three really similar big rangy outside receivers, two really good slots and a tight end. Who's a good receiver number 85 Blake Whitehart. Boyd in the left end of the defensive line for Clemson. Hardman running out of time, gets it off incomplete in the direction of Marin. K.J. Henry, who grew up around this stadium, Todd mentioned it earlier, his dad, Keith, was an assistant coach here for a decade. He is here wearing Clemson colors today. He was an assistant here under Jim Grobe. K.J. used to come to practices, said he had a yellow wig he used to wear yeah. to the games when he was a kid. We asked him if he had a picture of that. But I don't think he was trying that hard to find it. No. Well, yeah, that 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 possession right there, Sean, that was the best pressure that they've had on Sam Hartman. A couple plays really got after him. Third three and out for the Wake Forest offense. A punt on fourth and 17. Taylor, fair catch, 35-yard line. Well, last year, Clemson had seven sacks when they were not ranked, and Wake Forest was up in Death Valley. Happy homecoming so far for Henry. Clemson leading 14 to 7. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by Arby's. Back at Truist Field, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, battle of two top 25 teams, both undefeated. Two of the four ACC teams ranked in the top 25 this week. DJ Uyunglele and Clemson leading 14 to 7. Scored in their first two possessions and punted on the last two. Maffa 
some running room along the left side out across the 40 yard line and taken down by Ja'Cory Johns. Off a pretty good looking third team tailback, 230 pounds, sophomore out of Loganville, Georgia. Talked to Brandon Street, he said, I, I'm confident in all three of our backs in all situations, first, second, or third down, they're all capable of doing everything we want. Four receivers, two to each side. Uwe Ungalale, single coverage too high over the head of E.J. Williams. Junior from Phoenix City, Alabama. Here's third down and five. They've had at least one first down, has Clemson on every possession. Feels like Dave Clawson's team has settled in and the crowd trying to do its part. The Brenning stool, the tight end, has been a weapon on third down. This is him right here in the slot, now moving to the other side of the formation. He has a touchdown catch. Uyunglele, just one for his last five after a seven for seven start. Going deep and caught! Antonio Williams beat Isaiah Wingfield. This is just beautiful throw and catch. He's running from the slot. So when you run a fade from the slot, you got all kind of room on the sideline. DJ knows that, puts it out over the outside shoulder, and the freshman receiver makes it a contested catch on his way out of bounds. Beautiful throw and catch for the first down. 39-yard play, their fourth of 30-plus. Williams out of Irmo, South Carolina. Top 100 player in the country nationally by just about all the rating services. Maffa wrapped up by A.J. Williams, a safety. See, he's in the slot. He gets separation right at the line of scrimmage, and he got all that sideline for D.J. to put the football. When you throw it over the outside shoulder like that, almost impossible to defend. Antonio Williams. His first career touchdown last week in the fourth quarter against Louisiana Tech. He'll have many more. Davis Allen, the tight end, the motion man. High snap. DJ fielded it. Maffa didn't quite get to the first down marker. It'll be third down at about a yard as we go under 11 minutes to go till halftime. Shipley on the sideline, just getting a rest, it seems. C.J. Spiller, the running backs coach, they made a number of changes on the offensive side of the ball, one of the great players in Clemson history. Moffa, the running back this time. And he got just enough, it seems, for the first down. Inside the 11-yard line, banged down by Dylan Hazen. Redshirt freshman out of the Woodlands, Texas. If you judge the matchup, Todd, just based on recruiting, yeah. <laughs> it's not even a matchup since 2018. 66 Clemson recruits have been in the ESPN top 300. Zero for Dave Clawson's team. They are a three and they hope four star recruit program, mostly three stars, and then they develop them. That is a very strange. Freeze by Uyunga the lane with nobody coming to help him execute the fake on his team. And Kobe Turner dropped him for a loss. If I had to guess, I would guess that the running back is the one who made a mistake there, Phil Maffa, not the quarterback. But yeah, when you don't fake to anybody, it doesn't fool the defense. And kind of a giveaway play there on first down for Clemson. Maybe DJ felt if he just stood there long enough, somebody was going to come help execute the fit. Their version of the slow mesh. Yes, extremely slow and invisible mesh. <laughs> Better this time, down to the nine goes Uwe Youngalame. Tackled by Kobe Turner, transfer from Richmond, where he was three times all Colonial Athletic Association. And Coach Lambert was raving about him yesterday. It's a big play for Brad Lambert's defense right here. You gotta hold Clemson to a field goal attempt. 
give up another touchdown here at this point in the second quarter. Third down and goal from just inside the 10. Mafa remains the running back. Uyangalale pressured from behind, takes off running, and lunges for the pylon. I think he stepped out first at the three, and he did. Good effort, though, by Uyangalale. Nothing open, good coverage in the end zone. Right there, yep, clearly stepped out with his left foot before he extended the football. The progressive pylon camp. Left foot out. Wow, that's a great shot. That ball was heading right for the pylon, but that left foot was clearly out. Yeah, Sweeney still has the offense on the field. And he might let the clock run down and then take a timeout here. They gave him the two yard line instead of the three. Originally, the official on the far sideline was standing on the three yard line. I think he'll take the points. I mean, I think Dabo just let the clock down, but he's going to take points here. It was a good drive. So here is B.T. Potter having an outstanding career and perfect this year. Four for four in field goals, one of the strongest legs in the country. They were happy when he came back for his last year. They thought he might leave for the NFL. Drew Sweeney is the holder, the coach's son. His brother Will was the holder for the previous five years. I think they got a, another younger brother that's going to be a holder too, right? That's Play. The, the uh, long tradition at Clemson of Sweeney holders. The sixth straight year, Dabo's had one of his sons holding. Speaking of holding, Antonio Williams is being held, still took in that long pass to set up the field goal. Taste of the town when we come back. Too much time is on nothing. Your wallet. It's time for Todd's Taste of the Town, brought to you by DoorDash. Sweet Potatoes was opened in 2003 by partners Vivian Joyner and North Carolina-born chef Stephanie Tyson. They serve unique, southern-inspired, uptown, down-home cooking. What they have for me today, their signature appetizer basket of fried green tomatoes and fried okra, bone-in fried chicken made the way Stephanie's grandma Ora used to do it, and a cast-iron skillet with some fat back. A side of potato salad and collard greens, and of course, some sweet potato cornbread. Sam Cook said it right. Bring it on home to me. Yum, yum. Yo, really good. Really good. And here's another touchback. Here's Kevin Nagandi. Sean, updating you, number one, Georgia, 45-point favorites against Kent State in some trouble. Lad McConkey, he's had a long day of fumble here. Here comes Kent State. Yeah, good job by the corner, forcing the wide receiver back inside, forced a turnover. Okay, what's going on with the defense here? Defense just not getting the corner back on the outside. Your help is coming from the inside, and Georgia uncharacteristically gives it up. Okay, Brock Bauer, second touchdown. It's great having a guy that's that fast to tight end. 19 to 10, Sean. I am hungry after that video you showed us. <laughs> Sam Hartman after the fake long pass flag down. That'll be pass interference on Nate Wiggins. That was great protect because pass Sam Hartman double clutch. Defense number 20, 15 yard penalty, first down. The protection was so long he was able to double clutch and then get the ball out there to Perry and clearly another pass interference penalty on the Clemson secondary. They'll keep attacking. If they can get protection, they're going to attack. From the 40, Hartman fires. Nice catch on a high throw. Deshaun Williams got belted, but held on at the 47-yard line. Give us a quick summary of sweet potatoes. Look great. Yeah, it did. I mean, it was comfort food, soul food, fried chicken as good as I've ever had. And I didn't bring you any food, but I brought you, I ordered you a cookbook. I ordered you one of their cookbooks because their, a, their restaurant is actually called Sweet Potatoes Well Shut My Mouth. So I got you a Well Shut My Mouth 
cookbook and you can part of the segment that any way you and want. If I'm going to go along with this. But you don't eat when I bring well, you food I all the have time. This week. So you offended me I, last week. I did week a little extra cardio eating. this week. Just yeah. to if you promise of, you'll eat, I'll bring you something. I will definitely time. eat it next week, depending yeah. on what it is. Yeah. Well, High throw we go. through the hands of Keyshawn Williams. And a flag down. I wonder if they're going to look at a possible targeting or a late hit on this after the ball was clearly incomplete. Personal foul with targeting. Defense number 23. Toriano Pride, Dabo Sweeney, irate, and they're already thin in the secondary. This would be big. Ooh, if it stands, and we'll get Matt Austin's opinion when we come back. 17 7. Clemson has the lead. Oh, well, now we're told we're going to skip the commercial because there's something going on with Aaron Judge, Kevin. Thank you. Reminder and judge one home run shy of 61 a live look in to Yankee Stadium with uh, Michael K on the call as we mentioned it. Stand by here we go Aaron judge one home run shy of 61 here's a live look into Yankee Stadium and Michael K on the call part of the yes network as judge chases history. First two games against the Red Sox. New York Yankees. The right fielder. Number 99. Aaron Judge. Number 99. There's family here. And for those tuning in from around the country, welcome to the Yes Network. You're watching Yes's coverage of the New York Yankees and Aaron Judge's pursuit of history. Pavetta is ready. And deals. Foul back. The 0 1. Foul back, 0 2. So Pavetta going right at him. Uh, Coney, I would have dropped money on this and he'd come in and see two fastballs right off the bat, but you're right, Pavetta, right after Aaron Judge. Trying to fool him here and actually throwing fastballs. Strike three, Judge down looking. We saw three straight fetters. Okay, so Aaron Judge still sitting at home run number 60 right there. We will keep an eye on the action in the Bronx. His next at bat. We promise we will have live look ins from the Bronx right now. We're gonna go to commercial break, back to Clemson, Wake Forest after this. We're celebrating 50 years of Popeye's signature chicken with a deal you'll love. They announced that they had rescinded the targeting. They did enforce the personal foul against Toriano Pride for a late hit. He's still in the game. Clemson has been penalized seven times. Wake Forest down by 10. First and 10, and Hartman in trouble. And he'll go down for a loss. Back at the 35 yard line. Let's bring in Matt Austin. Matt, do you concur with the ruling? I do. It was a good pickup of the flag for targeting because this hit, it's not a crowd of the helmet. He does go into the shoulder of the receiver, kind of a shoulder to shoulder. Face mask might have brushed his face mask, but again, that's not enough for targeting, so this one's a good overturn. Here's Christian Turner. Nothing doing there. He still cannot run the ball against Clemson. They had 36 yards last year on 31 carries. They've rushed for four yards today. Well, you have to run a little bit to slow that pass rush down, but there's not a lot of effective holes there so far. Third and 13 here on the edge of field goal range. Hartman got hit as he throws, and it is caught at the five-yard line by an emerging star, Jamal Banks, the sophomore from Washington, D.C. It's a safety blitz. Earlier, they got to the quarterback. That time, Hartman got rid of it before Venables could get there. And Banks comes down with another contested catch. Good for 30 yards. 
They convert on third down and long. The first third down conversion. They've averaged more than 10 yards per third down. Now back shoulder throw. Backs again. Touchdown, Demon Dinkins. With the freshman pride in coverage. Coming into the season, Jamal Banks was not a starter, but Dave Blossom insisted we have three starting outside receivers. He had a great camp. He's our best contested catch guy, and we're seeing glimpses of that tonight. He had six catches last week, a career high against Liberty and two touchdowns. Three today, two more touchdowns. Wake Forest on the ropes early is now within three after the extra point by Matthew Dennis. Banks is 6'4", 208. He's up at the top of the screen in single coverage against a smaller defensive back, and Hartman keeps it in play and puts it in a position where he can use that big body. Perfect throw to the back shoulder. And again, freshman Toriano pride in coverage in good position, but just a great athletic play by Jamal Banks as we see the replay again from the progressive pylon game. Perfect throw catch. It's Hartman over 10,000 career passing yards. He's the ninth player in conference history to do it. All-time leading passer here at Wake Forest. He's a starter in his true freshman season of 2018. And Ivan Morrow will kick off. Will Shipley back deep. Trivia question. This is the 88th meeting all time. The last time they met as ranked opponents when both were ranked was in 1950. And the only other time was 1948. We don't know who were the head coaches. year in a row. Good run after the catch. Do you want to hazard a guess? Frank Howard probably, right? He had. Would that be the, uh, the other guy? Well, let's see. Yeah, there it is. Frank Howard and P. Head Walker. He had the only coach in history who won as many as four games against Clemson without a loss in Death Valley. His teams went four and all. He had admitted that the back there in the 40s during that run, Howard didn't have his full team and were completed by the war years. Two legendary coaches. Will Shipley, the ball carrier. Walker, 7-4 and four week against Howard, including a six-game winning streak. They were great pals. One year when Walker brought Wake Forest over to Clemson, Howard found a buddy of his who was a highway patrolman. He said, when the bus pulls up, Brad P. had to tell him he resembles a fugitive. And they did it. They handcuffed him against the telephone pole when he got off the bus. They asked one of Walker's players to vouch for him. And he said, I've never seen that man in his, my life. And they had some chuckle. And they let P. had in on joke. Very close friends. Will Shipley, the ball carrier, for a first down. Now when Shipley runs the football, and Wake Forest, other than the first play of the game, has done a pretty good job of containing him, but he just gives you that sense every time he touches it. If he gets to the next level of your defense, he can take that all the way to the goal line. He's that kind of a running back, that kind of explosion. Kobe Case back in at running back as he was hobbled earlier. First and ten, down to four minutes to go in the half. 
pace, tackled by Dion Bergen. Here's Molly. Well, DJ Uyunglele's favorite target, Bo Collins, was in visible pain on the sideline. Told athletic training staff, this really stings, headed back into the tent for the second time, where they took his pads off while working on his upper body, massaged the right side of his shoulder and neck. No word on his status, but Collins is definitely dealing with pain, Sean. Well, we saw Engada a little shaken up earlier in the ball game. Again, the wide receivers in the offensive line got decimated a year ago for this Clemson offense. DJ took the front of the plane. He's on target again to Ngana. Dabo Sweeney said, you know, we were a mess all over the offense, as you said, the injuries, particularly in the offensive line. They had seven different offensive line combinations start last year. Same group didn't start more than three times together. You mentioned it. I mentioned as well at the top of the telecast. This same five, McFadden, Tate, Putnam, Parks, and Miller from left to right have started all four games. That is so important for your continuity. Here's third down and four. Can Wake come up with another stop? Not this time. Good catch at the 45-yard line by Antonio Williams. You see the confidence that DJ has in that young receiver, Williams. He's gone to him in some critical third down situations. Show some courage that time running that inside breaking route. Two and a half to go. Each team with all three timeouts. And very little there for Shipley as he ducked his head. Chase Jones made the tackle. This is an important part of the game for both teams. Remember, Clemson won the toss and deferred. They got the ball here now as we approach two minutes, and they'll get the ball to start the third quarter. So a chance to uh, potentially score twice for Clemson. On second and nine, short set, batted pass, and it falls incomplete. They have not been able to get to DJ and knock him down, but they're able to just keep eyes on the quarterback. And when he releases it, get that hand up in the air and knock it away. And Ron Wayman back up defensive end. The well, last time they played here, a couple of years ago, there were only 68 fans in attendance. Yeah, we were here too, right? We were. Different story here today. A lot Supporting the Demon Deacons, Uyungle, right on the target again. E.J. Williams, and they convert on third down. Well, they have been good on third down. That was an area that they felt they really needed to get better. This is a long throw. This shows you the arm strength of Uyungle, all the way to the left sideline and right on target. Very A.J. Robertson coverage. Should mention that Wake Forest, Tuned in late playing without their starting Please reset the game Kalen clock Carson. to one minute, 42 seconds. 142. We spoke with Brad Lambert, the defensive coordinator, yesterday about Carson, and he acknowledged that he wasn't going to play with a hamstring injury. Uh, Lambert visibly wins. Yes, he did. Yeah. 42 seconds. I mean, he's just a youngster. He's just a sophomore, but he started last year as a freshman and played. There's Brad Lambert. Doesn't seem a lot happier right now. This second tour here in Wake Forest was here for a decade with Jim Grove. Very happy to come back. His family loved it here. One time, the head coach at Charlotte helped the 49ers start their program. Under duress immediately, Uy Angelone throws it away. He was pursued by Kobe Turner and Kevin Pointer. Well, that's the first time that they were really able to get to the quarterback and knock him down. Good quick pressure initially by Pointer. And then you see Kobe Turner there to finish it off. But that's what Wake Forest needs. They need to get more pressure on DJ Uy Uyunglele, especially on third down. You mentioned earlier, under Lambert, they wanted more of an attacking defense that their defensive line would cut loose rather than just try to stay in gaps and hold up blockers. Here's Davis Allen, lots of running room. He goes up and over and has the first down of the 19. 
hit by Chalen Guards. I guess if you're tight end, you can't leap over somebody. You're not an athlete in today's college football. <laughs> He does, and they hit, somehow he got lost by the Wake Forest coverage. He came in motion and slipped right out into the flat. He was uncovered. He's going second down for the first down conversion. And 312 yards of offense in the half. Big sequence here for Wake Forest. Hold it to a field goal attack. On the slant, that's deflected. Smith applying pressure. Good pressure by Smith coming on the inside blitz. DJ threw that ball before he wanted to. Did a nice job just getting rid of it, but he was not able to set his feet and make an accurate throw. He had the coverage he wanted, but he couldn't get the ball off. Thirteenth play of the drive. 104 to go in the half. And led 14 to nothing, now up by three. Pressure right up the middle. It looked like he was going to try to go in that direction on a quarterback draw. And Chase Jones was right in the path. And they drop it for a loss, back to the 20. Yeah, when they put the back in motion, it brought the linebacker out. But the other linebacker was blitzing, Chase Jones. And that's what disrupted the timing. It was a quarterback draw, but the blitz by the linebacker Jones really disrupted the play. They're three out of three on third down on this drive. And eight for 11 in the first half. Final 30 seconds. Uyungle, miscommunication with his receiver. And Ghana pulled up inside the 10 yard line. And DJ threw it in the end zone. Well, here comes the field goal team. You'd have to think, Todd, that classifies as a win for the Demon Deacon defense. Absolutely. Even though it was a 13-play drive, and you're not going to get the ball back with very much time, to hold them to a field goal attempt is definitely a win because it's still a one-possession game at that point. Potter 5 for 5 for the season after his 24-yarder earlier in this half. This one's from 38. Good. With 14 seconds to go. Last two red zone trips for Clemson and DJ Uli Angelove. They settled for two field goals. He's thrown for 192 in the half. State Farm Halftime Report just minutes away. Dan Mullen, Booger McFarland, Kevin Nagani. Right now, Clemson up 20-14. to 14. What are you seeing from the offense? Uh, DJ Uyunglele has been very efficient. Great decision-making at what he's been out there on the field. Accurate, putting the ball where it needs to be and throwing it away when he needs to throw it away. Trouble in the big house right now? Yeah, J.J. McCarthy's not playing well. Some questionable decision-making. And run the football more. Blake Quorum has been outstanding so far. He just scored a touchdown to take the lead. Highlights coming your way at the break. Sean? All right, Kevin. T. Potter's kickoff a touchback, the 300th of his career. That's most in college football since 2000. Dave Clausen said, we're not even going to work on our kickoff return right. this week because we're not going to get a chance to return it. And they have had a couple come down near the goal line have opted not to run them back. Well, if you're Dave Clausen, you've got to be pleased. The game did not start exactly the way you wanted it. You Good launch luck. one here? Or? No, I think you run. to launch it. It's going to help their rushing total. They're four yards rushing for the half. That one got six. And they're going to let the half end. It's 20 to 14. Last year it was 17 to three at halftime. And then two turnovers in the third quarter late or deep in their own territory really turned the game. Right now, no turnovers in the game for either team in a one score ball game. 20 to 14 at the half. We'll send you to the studio for the State Farm halftime report after this message and a word from our ABC stations. This is the ACC on ESPN. Welcome back to ESPN's college football on ABC presented by Arby's. 
Truest Field, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, two undefeated teams, an important game in the ACC. Clemson raced off to a 14 to nothing lead. Their lead now 20 to 14 as we get ready for the second half. Sean McDonough and Todd Blackledge. We talked to Brandon Streeter, the new offensive coordinator for Clemson during the week. He said the two priorities for improvement this season red zone and third down they've been excellent in both yeah three for three in the red zone although two times they had to settle for field goals but that's every possession so far this season then on third down eight for 12 today and a couple of them some long yardage situations dj Uyugulale, very accurate knowing where he wanted to go with the football for wake forest we talked about the slow mesh offense if they can protect the quarterback they've got favorable matchups on the back end against this clemson defense good protection heart and goes to Banks. They connected three times in the first half, two times for touchdowns. 309 total yards for Clemson, including that eight out of 12 on third down. More of the same for Wake against Clemson. They just can't run the ball at all. Just 10 yards rushing on 11 carries. Ivan Moore kicks off. Clemson gets the ball first. To start the second half. Will Shipley's going to try it from the one. He got hit hard as he was airborne down at the 25 yard line. And Shipley a little slow to get up, but he's limping off now, and here's Molly. Well, Sean, Wake Forest head coach Dave Clawson said this wasn't the fast start we wanted, but we held up on the opening punch in the second quarter. We settled in, but our issue in the first half, we had 129 yards of offense, but 85 of those were in penalties from Clemson PI calls. And without those pass interferences, we would have had some big explosive plays. He said this is a one score game against the number five team in the country. I like our chances. Trying to beat Clemson for the first time in his. Nine seasons as head coach. He's 0 and 8. Quick slant. And Donna almost took it to the house. But Gavin Holmes did make an excellent tackle. He was gone. The play goes to the 44. Very interesting. I haven't seen that kind of a play action pass out of Clemson for a while. DJ made the fake and just stayed right in that same position and delivered a strike for the first down. Well designed play. Ungulale completed his first seven. Now eight for 16 Saints has a nice pocket fires another deep ball and it's batted down. Tended for Antonio Williams well covered again by Gavin Holmes. Ball was a little bit high sailed a little bit on DJ because it was high that enabled Gavin Holmes to come over the top and knock it away. Aggressive start here in the third quarter for Clemson. On the run, Phil Maffa tackled by Chase Jones. Third down and seven. A minute into the third quarter, the sun coming out now here in Winston-Salem on a mostly cloudy day. They're 8 for 12 on third down. Just a four-man rush, but they force Uyungle away back, and he throws it away. Pressured by Rondell Bothroyd, the redshirt junior from Manchester, Connecticut. Here's Kevin Nagandi. One home run shy of 61. We're getting set for a live look into Yankee Stadium right now. Red Sox up three to two, bottom of the third, and Judge leading off in the inning. He's 0 for 1 so far in this game. Michael K, David Cohn, Paul O'Neill on the call as we go live to the Bronx as Aaron Judge chases history. For those tuning in from around the country, welcome to the Yes Network, the number one regional sports network in the country. And you're watching Yes's coverage of the New York Yankees as Aaron Judge will lead off in the bottom of the third. Foul back. 
Now the fastball. The Judge family. They've been here for the ride. The 0-1. One and one. The Maris family has been here as well. They also said that if it doesn't happen here, they might go to Toronto. Judge with 60 home runs. And the 1-1. One, 1-2. One. One and two. This has been amazing so far. The number of fastballs that Pavetta has gone at Judge. Another good one right there. Good pitch to hit. Just fouled off. Pavetta deals the one two. Finally goes with the breaking ball. crowd gets so silent right before the pitch is being delivered. There's a crescendo because he's judged all rise when he comes to the plate. But then when the pitch is about to be delivered, this. High fly ball, center field. Almonte is there. And he puts it away for the first out. Okay, so right now he's 0 for 2, and we promise his third at bat we will take you there live. Reminding you, we've got Sunday Night Baseball. We have Aaron Judge and the Red Sox coming your way, as well as the K-Rod broadcast on ESPN2. Back to Sean as Wake Forest takes the lead. Yeah, Kevin, in the game the people were tuning in to watch, Wake Forest has taken the lead on a touchdown pass to Donovan Green. Nifty drive. They had three long plays of 20 yards plus. It starts with protection. Watch the back pick up the blitz. Hartman steps up and working on another freshman cornerback. That's Donovan Mitchell beating Jaden Lucas. And Wake Forest takes the lead. Clemson had the longest streak without trailing that was alive in college football. They have not trailed at any time in their last six games. Never trailed in the last three last year, the first three this season, led 14 and nothing today. And they're down 21 20 now as Drew Sweeney returns the short kickoff and gets stopped at the 19 yard line. Impressive drive while we were away watching Aaron Judge, Todd. Yeah, it started with Sam Hartman. Nothing down the field. He finds a little running lane and scoots away for a gain of 22 yards or 25 yards. They got a sack. He doesn't panic. He comes back. The swing pass to Ellison picks up 22. And then right after that, good protection, help from the back. Ellison picking up the blitz. One-on-one -on -one coverage against a freshman cornerback. And all of a sudden, Wake Forest, early in the third quarter, takes a lead in the game. Eldrick Robinson is the injured player. And we'll step aside with 12.09 to go in the third quarter here in Winston-Salem. Back in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, less than three minutes gone by, second half, Wake on the ropes early, down 14 and nothing has rallied for a one point lead against Clemson. They play the Tigers every year. They haven't beaten them since 2008. Will Shipley on first down, stopped immediately by Chase Jones. And we just mentioned first time Clemson has trailed after six straight games without trailing. They've won 62 in a row when leading at halftime. The last loss when leading at the half, and there's a long way to go in this one. It was November 12, 2016. They lost at home to Pittsburgh. And that was also the last home loss for Clemson. Here we go. 
on to the left. Rumbles for a couple. To Shane Davis there. There's a different pep in the step of this Wake Forest defense, too. You know, Molly, when he talked, she talked to Dave Claus, he said, we settled down in the second quarter. The other thing they did, they started to find ways to get pressure on DJ Uyunglele. They did it in the second quarter, and so far to start this quarter, third quarter, they've done the same. Big third down. Three receivers to the right. Uyunglele hit as he throws, and it's off the hand of his intended receiver, and incomplete. Trying to get it to Adam Randall. Big target at 6'2", 230 was just a little too high. That's the best pass rusher, and that's a true freshman right tackle. They run a little game on the right tackle in the guard, and Bob Roy gets there and is able to get there before DJ wanted to get rid of the football. Nice little stunt on the side of the freshman right tackle, and they get the stop on third down. The first three and out. The last punt by Aiden Swanson with a 21-yard shank. First-year punter. This is a low line drive. Very returnable on a bounce. Taylor Moran into Clemson territory to the 44. Where he's tackled by Wade Woodass. There is a flag down far side of the field along the numbers. 36-yard punt, 11-yard return. So far in the game, penalty-wise, seven for 85 yards for Clemson, only one penalty for 15 yards against Wake Forest to this point. Seven penalties and 85 penalty yards are the most in a game this season for Clemson. They did it in a half. During the return, personal foul, face mask, receiving team number eight, 15-yard penalty. First down, Wake Forest. Isaiah Wingfield. It's a big call. As Todd said, just the second penalty against Dave Clawson's team today. Back in eight seconds after a look from Ram Trucks. Ram Trucks built to serve. I have a Dodge Ram. I love my Ram truck. You do? I do. Now, when I said a lot of nice things about Cheez-Its, yeah. which I believe in all my heart, we both got, I don't know why you got it, but we both got a nice care package from Cheez-It. Are you uh, hoping for a new Ram truck? Or, you know, a cab cover or something, maybe. Yeah, yeah. New wheels. Wow, this ball is going all the way yeah. back to the 30. They were going to have it inside the 45-yard line. Yeah, that's a big turnaround. I mean, they, they have momentum. They got the stop. They would have been deep already into Clemson territory. Instead, now back at the 30-yard line. So here's Hartman. And on first down, it's Christian Turner for nothing. Of course, their longest run of the day was by Hartman on the last drive when he pulled it down and took off running. He ran for 25 yards to start the drive on the last series. They had 10 yards rushing all day before that scramble. Tyler Venables made the tackle. Son of now the Oklahoma coach, Brent Venables, is able to watch them play as a fan against Virginia, or rather Louisiana Tech last weekend. Nice catch by Banks on a first down. Again, the slow mesh affects linebackers' eyes. They've got to respect the run. Watch the linebackers, the voided area, and Hartman gets it right in there to the opening. Hartman steps up in the pocket, throws, and it's caught. Looked like enough for the first down with the forward progress by A.T. Perry. Driven back by Nate Wiggins, and they are going to give him just inside the 48 of the Tigers for another first down. For the difference, we talked about Uyunglele slimming down this year. Yeah. We were here for one of Sam Hartman's first games in 2018 when he was a true freshman. He was at the most 190. He runs toward the line and lobs it up. There is a flag down as A.T. Perry made the tackle. Several flags down. 23-yard pass play if it stands. And Nate Wiggins thinks it's going against him. He was close enough to hear the conversation. 
holding defense, number 21. I'll tell you who's doing a really good job in this Wake Forest offense, the two backs now. They're trying to bring pressure. These backs have got to stop the safety or the linebacker blitz. Beautiful job by Turner. Hartman's able to step up a little bit, and he gets the one-on-one -on -one coverage. The holding is on Nate Wiggins on the outside. Didn't matter. Still a beautiful throw by Hartman. It was completed now eight in a row as that one's caught. Dancing around Keyshawn Williams. Hartman throws a block for him. There are flags down in the middle of the field. Hartman lost his helmet. Dave Clawson was talking about the development of Hartman over the years, not just stronger, which is the point I was going to make a moment ago. He's added about 25 pounds in the weight room. But he's become much more of a leader, and the players notice when a guy with surgery to remove a blood clot. Personal foul, illegal blindside block, offense, number 59. 15-yard penalty, first down. And August is out there blocking ahead of the play, yeah. and he's done that several times this year. Yeah, and he's out and leading on this play. You know, this is a really tough penalty. I understand it's the right call, but this ball completely reversed field. Nobody designed the play this way, and the little the offensive guard, he's just trying to, to peel somebody off. He gets called for the illegal block. Because he lost the helmet, here's Mitch Griffiths in for probably one snap. He started their opener against VMI and led them the victory. He's going to sling it deep like everybody else. And there's a flag. A.T. Perry just got ripped down. By the face mask, I think. Yes, indeed. It looked that way from here by Nate Wiggins. And if it was under duress. Sean, if Griffiths throws this ball more to the middle, it's an easy touchdown. The ball sailed behind the intended receiver. And when A.T. Perry stopped to go back for the ball, that's where the penalty occurred. Watch, he's got single coverage. If he throws that ball more towards the goal post, it's a touchdown. Well, he didn't exactly get a lot of time to warm no, up. you're right. But I mean, he's beat right now. Throw that ball to the goal post, it's a touchdown in one play. Instead, pass interference and another first down. Fourth pass interference against Clemson of their eight penalties. Hartman back in. That slow mesh, and he sends Christian Turner on his way. See, that's a great run in this offense, right? And against a defense like this, you're not running it well, but runs like that make Clemson play honest. We talked to Wayne Ruggiero. He said, do you have a goal for running? He says, no, no goals. Just, just win. Whatever we have to do to win the football game, we're going to do. Uh-oh. Trouble on that handoff and staying on his feet, lunging forward. Make it a gain of one. Christian Turner. See, the reason that Wake Forest is getting so much man coverage is because they're trying to find ways to pressure Sam Hartman. When you bring extra bodies in the rush, you have to play man, and Wake Forest is attacking. One third down conversion. This is much shorter. Back shoulder throw and a touchdown. Blake Whitehart, the ball came out. But three officials had already signaled a touchdown. How many times do you see them throw a back shoulder to a tight end? But Wake Forest practices this all the time. Does he secure the ball all the way to the ground? I think he did. The ball came out late. Catches it to the ground. And then after he rolls, the ball comes out. What a throw and catch by design against good coverage. And now it's Wake Forest with an eight-point lead. After the extra point by Matthew Dennis, Sam Hartman. What a courageous season he's having. Clemson is trying to bring pressure, trying to bring extra bodies. That leaves man coverage in the back end against the wideouts and against the tight end. He's working on Simpson, Sam Hartman. What a throw. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear. Road tested and game ready. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear more driven. Ivan Moore to kick off. Through his field, rollicking now. That little hooch kickoff has worked pretty well. And this time, Drew Sweeney calls for a fair catch. Well, the last three times, Todd, they've tried to score. 
They've scored a touchdown, doesn't include the end of the half when they ran one play and took it in. Now, we talked about if you give Sam Hartman time, these receivers are going to have good matchups one on one. And that has really paid off. Sam Hartman has been accurate, he's been courageous. The backs have picked up blitzes. Sam Hartman has thrown four touchdown passes. You know what? The other side of that, the complimentary side of the Wake Forest defense, the last two possessions, Clemson had the ball. Long drives had to settle for field goals both times. Four touchdown passes for Hartman is one shy of his career high. Printing stool to catch. He threw five last year in that wild game up at North Carolina. He's the ninth player in ACC history to be responsible for 100 touchdowns. 83 of them now passing. He's also rushed for 17. And four touchdown drives, all of 68 yards or longer. Will Shipley stacked up two yards short of the first down by Ja'Cory Johns. Brandon Street is going to need to have his quarterback run the football a little bit more here in the second half. They, they kind of stopped up the line. They're doing a good job against Will Shipley. Maybe not on this third down play, but some more designed runs for DJ Uyunglele to get a little bit outside. Well, they went up and down the field on their first two possessions to score touchdowns. They've punted on their last two possessions. Trying to avoid another three and out. There's that run Todd was calling for. Great call by Blackledge and Streeter. And a first down in the weight territory to the 44-yard line. Well, again, there's just so much attention being paid to Shipley inside. Get your quarterback out a little bit. Nice job reading it. They go with Shipley to take the pitch away. And again, he's a big body who is a good runner. He's not a super shifty runner, but he's a very, very effective runner. And that was a big third down conversion. Gavin Holmes, starting cornerback, is injured. And as we mentioned earlier, they're already playing without Kalen Carson, a starting corner uh, with a hamstring injury. Liberty came after Holmes last year, Clemson early, or last week, Clemson early today, but he's won his share of the battles as well. This season, Allstate will celebrate every field goal and extra point made by participating universities. They'll make a donation to the university's scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. And Sean, if I'm Brandon Streeter right now, you already mentioned Carson did not play at all in the game. Gavin Holmes, their best corner on the field, is not going to be on the field at least for one play, if not more. You've had time to be on the sideline to talk about this. I wouldn't be surprised to see them take a deep shot towards the end zone right here on first down. You just converted. You're going to have a new corner in the game. Play action, good protection, and take a shot for a touchdown. There's the college football rankings entering today, brought to you by Verbo. Clemson number five. Alabama and Ohio State in action tonight. Georgia ahead of Kent State. Brent Venables, former Clemson defensive coordinator, has Oklahoma undefeated. The national championship trophy is here. Presented by Dr. Pepper. Of course, Clemson's won two of those under Dabo Sweeney, 2016 and 18. His team down by eight, but on the move with the sun shining brightly here. J.J. Roberts back in. He plays a lot. Cornerback rotation. Isaiah Wingfield has moved from safety to corner. Shipley. Shipley. Tackled in the open field, but looks like another first down. Jamal Martin made the tackle. Transfer from California of Pennsylvania. Playing with a big club on his hand, too. Tough to grab a hold of anything, but a nice job getting Shipley to the ground. Shipley having trouble finding running room on the inside. Good idea. Get them the ball on the perimeter. Just throw it to him and give him some space. Let him use his skill set. Uyunglele for the end zone. Incomplete. 
Looking for Joseph and Ghana. Covered by Isaiah Wingfield. Isaiah Wingfield is the starting nickel in the ball game. With the injury to Gavin Holmes, they moved him outside to corner, and he's in good position. He had eyes on the quarterback the whole way, and is able to slip inside and knock the ball away. Wingfield's a transfer from Harvard. One of his first team all Ivy last year. Just lost the whole season in 2020 when the Ivy League canceled play. Will Shipley, the running back on second and ten. Give it to him again. He's open. Uyungle running out of time. Back dangerously across the middle and batted down. Lucky to get away with that. Flipped it in the general direction of Will Shipley, and it was Jamal Martin with that club able to bat it down. Yeah, right now, as you see Shipley go in motion, give him the football right here. Let Throw him the ball quickly and let him try to make somebody miss. DJ held on to it, tried to extend the play, and made kind of an ill-advised throw back towards the middle of the field. The third down and 10. Told Gavin Holmes just has a cramp. They expect him back in the secondary for the Demon Deacons. Louis Younger the way, jump ball, caught. Bo Collins the catch. Back in action after that injury described on their bench to something that stung. Looked like he kind of shoved down the coverage man wow. to make the catch. J.J. Roberts. Shipley on first and goal from the five. Got one. Again, this is the area where I think you've got quarterback run. You, you really sell that fake to Shipley inside. You got the big body quarterback. Gavin Holmes back in the ball game now. Mel Martin out of the game. Line of scrimmage is the three, second and goal. William Lee kept it. Davis Allen has the touchdown. Beautiful throw by DJ Uyunglele. You throw this ball high. Here's Davis. He's just going to go. He's working against the safety, Mustafa. But you throw this ball high enough. And your tight end who bodies him up, he's the only guy who can make that play. Perfect throw, nice touch by DJ for the touchdown. Thompson lining up to go for two. And tie it. Sometimes coaches will wait to the fourth quarter to do that. But not Dabo Sweeney. Four and a half minutes to go. They put the ball on the left hash mark. Timeout called by Clemson. First charge timeout. Clemson. 30 seconds. Well, do you like the decision here? It seems, of course, Dabble Swing could change his mind right. during this timeout, but do you like the decision to go for two in the top? Yeah, I don't mind at this point. I think if you do this in the first half, it's chasing points. I don't think it, it makes a lot of sense. Right now, I think it's fine. Even if you miss, you still could take the lead with a field goal. So you feel like you have momentum. That was a nice drive, a nice response. Yeah, I'm okay with this. Have to give Wake Forest a lot of credit uh, for what they did early in the game coming back from that 14-0 yeah. deficit. This is a pretty nice response absolutely. by DJ Uyunglele on this drive. Yeah, his absolutely. Base. I mean, you know, Wake Forest lost a couple players in that possession. Clemson took advantage of it. They they ran the football with the quarterback on a big third down play, and then DJ hit a couple of nice throws. So you're right, great response. You feel like you got some momentum. Try to get two more and tie it up. We'll continue to monitor the Clemson Wake Forest game in a two box. That's on the left side and the right side. Aaron Judge, one home run shy of 61, a live look into Yankee Stadium. Let's go there with Michael Kay, David Cohn, Paul O'Neill on the call. Around the country, welcome to the Yes Network, the number one regional sports network in the country. And you are watching Yes's coverage of the New York Yankees and Aaron Judge. Judge 0 for 2, runner on first. Sitting at 60 home runs.
fastball, 1-0. They put new baseballs into play when Judge comes up, specially marked. So they can identify the ball if and when it goes into the stands. Crowd standing here at the stadium. And holding its breath. 1-0. Oh. There was a curve to it. Huh? Well, Coney, here's a, a count where he could challenge him. I mean, this is a big pitch right here for Pavetta. You've shown fastball. Now in a fastball count, will you challenge Aaron Judge? And the 2-0. There's a strike. That was a slider. Mm -hmm. it's the second baseball that Pavetta has thrown away. Didn't like the feel. No one wants to be sitting when this ball lands. They want to be able to move. Now the silence before the pitch. The 2-1. Two, 2-2. One. Two and 2. Judges had, as Aaron Boone has said often, a season for the ages. Just a magical 2022 flirting with a triple crown flirting with the American League single season home run record and the 2 2 three and two Kind of the same situation, Coney. It was 2 0. He went to the slider. Now it's 3 2. Will he challenge it? And the 3 2 pitch fell back to the screen. He did challenge him. He did, and he challenged him outside the strike zone. Aaron Judge just underneath. That ball very hard with that slide uppercut to really square up. But a good swing. It's a pitch that Aaron Judge has gotten to a lot this year as opposed to years past as he continues to evolve as a great hitter, not just a great slugger. Run on first, nobody out. 3 2 count on Judge. And Pavetta deals. Way outside, he walked him. So 0 for 2 and a walk right there and we promise you we'll get the back to the Bronx the next time Aaron Judge is at the plate. Also ESPN Sunday Night Baseball has the Yankees Red Sox tomorrow night back to a good one in Winston Salem. Sean. And a great play Kevin by DJ Uyunglele on the two point try. They seemingly had him wrapped up to take him down and stop the play and on one leg he threw to Bo Collins to tie it. Meanwhile, Wake Forest is on the move again against the Clemson defense that suddenly can't stop them. There's been another pass interference play. Here's the two point play. Remarkable, Todd. Yeah, just 6'4, 235, just standing his ground on one leg, shows you the arm strength, flicks it to the back of the end zone to his former high school teammate, and we got a tie ball game, and Wake Forest on the move again impressively. And they convert on third and short. Maybe, yes, it seems, on the lunge by Justice Ellison. Looked like they had him bottled up. Brian Brzee made the tackle for Clemson, but not before Wake Forest got the first down. Yeah, it was a lunge and it was a push from a couple of his linemen that got him across the mark. Not a lot of running yards, but some effective runs here in the second half for Wake Forest. After 43 yards rushing for the game, 25 by Hartman on one play, who's running for his life again. Gets belted as he throws, and it's incomplete. Tenant for Jamal Banks. Ruko Roro -ro -ro delivered the hit. And it gets up, kind of squeezing his right hand a little bit. Took a hard shot from Roro -ro -ro, 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 ro Trying to extend the play. Off 
coverage right now by Clemson. They've gotten burnt on defensive pass interferences and on the deep plays. Look, off coverage, both corners playing more zone. It's actually Chief McGuire, 30, not 33, who delivered the hit. Allison runs, weaving through the traffic. He got 11 and a first down. See, this is about numbers. If you're trying to defend the pass, you run the football. The numbers say run, and Wake Forest with one of their best runs of the ball game because Clemson is afraid of the passing game of San Hartman. Wake Forest marching up and down the field. Ellison after the slow mesh to the 25-yard line. 102 minutes to go in the third quarter. Thought it was interesting. Warren Bajera told us yesterday, we are an attacking offense. We're aggressive. We know we're going to get sacked because we're going to take some shots down the field. We're going to hold the ball. But our good plays outweigh our bad plays. And that's been the case today. There's another long throw. Corner of the end zone. Touchdown. Second of the day for Donovan Green. Officials conferring now to make sure he was in. Nate Wiggins has had a tough quarter. Green missed all the last year due to injury. These are his first touchdown grabs since 2020. Perfect placement, the foot down, the ball secured. That's a touchdown. You can't put the ball in a better place. He's got enough separation. He high points it. Wiggins does not know where the football is. Progressive pylon can shows the right foot down and the ball caught. And back and forth they go. The latest response by the Demon Deacons. Matthew Dennis, the extra point. Four touchdowns in their last four possessions in which they were trying to score. No, not at all. A dandy of the ACC. And Sam Hartman continues to make history five Touchdown throws matching his career high. Second time he's done it. Did it at North Carolina last season. And they weren't lying about their receiver for oh boy, they're good. Big reason they can launch it up is they have five guys who can go up and get it. Two touchdown catches today for Donovan Green. Here's that pooch kick again. You know, Sean, there was evidence. There was evidence of some problems with that secondary last week. They gave up seven passes of 20 yards or more to Louisiana Tech. But they're not what they've been in the back end on defense. Clemson, a lot of losses on the roster. Here's the last drive by Clemson that tied the game. Allen, the catch, and they went for two. And Ooh, young of the way. Might have lost 30 pounds, but he's still plenty big enough and strong enough. Great enough balance to stay on one leg and fire the Bo Collins. That tied it. They're down by seven now. And after the play fade, DJ under duress throws incomplete for Brandon Spector. Rondell Bothroyd had the immediate pressure. He's one of the best in the ACC. He had 16 and a half tackles for loss last year, third in the conference. Including two at Clemson in their loss. Last year, Clemson ran for 332 yards against Wake Forest's defense. New defensive staff, two holdovers from the old staff, new coordinator in Brad Lambert, a little more aggressive approach. 148 yards for Clemson rushing today. That's still good yardage, but nothing like 332. Moffa stopped after a one-yard gain by Jalen Hudson. Final 40 seconds of the third quarter. Lots of time for Uwe Ungelove. Launches it up for it and got him! Wow. And he got it! With J.J. Roberts in coverage. One bomb after another. Many completed, some pass interference. 
That one good for 46. You know, J.J. Roberts is in good position, and he sees the ball. He knows that it's coming. But he just mistimes his jump. He's a little bit slow getting off the ground, and Gata goes up quickly and wins the battle. Those 50-50 balls won by the offense primarily today. That's the end of a wild third quarter. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Now a back and forth game in Winston-Salem, and I'm told Wake Forest safety Malik Mustafa has a separated right shoulder. He was brought into the locker room for an injection and will try to play, but he is still in the locker room during this crucial Clemson drive, Sean. Yeah. Evan Slocum who's listed as the number three safety is in for his place, number 14. So we talked about the injuries for the Clemson secondary now piling up a little bit for Wake Forest as well. I should mention that shot you saw Mustafa was on tape. He is in the locker room. Louis Angole, another clean pocket, another completion. Brenning still tackled at the 20 short of the first down. Good stop by Isaiah Wingfield. We are seeing some outstanding quarterback play today on both sides of the field. I mean, both of these guys are playing lights out. Well, they've thrown a combined eight touchdowns with no interceptions. Hartman's thrown five to tie the school record. Will Younglele's thrown three. Will Shipley trying to get the first down. Kobe Turner made the stop short of the first down. Third down, less than a yard. You would think four down territory here. They bring in Luke Price, an extra tight end. Clock running under 14 minutes to go. Out of the gun. Shipley, first down. Really Another Shipley thing impressive to me, Todd, about Uwe Youngle, he really carries out yeah. those fakes after he hands it off. And a few times from up here, you had to hesitate for a moment to make sure he didn't have the ball. And, and you wonder, okay, what, what's the effect of that? The effect of that is it makes linebackers be honest. Even if it causes a slight hesitation and takes them away from a play, that's all you want. Just buy an extra second by carrying out a fake. He almost missed the handoff here to Shipley. Cuts inside the 10. Shows that combination of speed and power. Their coaches talk about Evan Slocum, who's in there for Mustafa, in on the tackle. And is it a first down? Yes, it is. Good fake, good run, nice blocking outside by the receivers. Brandon Spector, number 13, right in the middle of that. Well, just one response drive after another. No turnovers yet. You wonder if that's going to be the difference in this ball game with two hot offenses. Perhaps just one defensive stop might be enough. Shipley again on first and goal from the six. they down to the four, stopped by Tyler Williams. Middle of that defensive line. Second down. Dave Clawson, very close with Dabo Sweeney. They worked a lot together during the pandemic to come up with the protocols that these teams would observe. Williams down on the field. Dabo Sweeney said, I admired Dave Clawson as a football coach and as a man. Dave Clawson said, I feel the same way with Dabo, but he probably likes me because he's 8-0 against me. <laughs> Clawson trying to make it 8-1. Back in a moment. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, celebrating the challenge of road games everywhere. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear more driven. The stop up. Back out of the locker room with the shoulder injury, trying to get loose. Told the coaches he is ready to go back in. Second and goal, Clemson trying to tie it. From the four, Uyunga Lale got banged down 
just shy of the goal line. Evan Slocum. Mustafa stand in with a big hit on a stumbling Uyunglele. Yeah, if he goes lower and goes for the legs, Uyunglele is going to carry him into the end zone. But he hits him high and knocks him sideways, and that's why he comes up short of the goal line. Good hard tackle by Evan Slocum. Just 5'10", 190 pounds, third down and goal. 11 and a half to go. Well, they call DJ again. Shipley on his right hip. Shipley stopped and then lunging for the goal line and gets there. Some question as to whether or not his elbow was down. We'll take a close look at it. He's hit by Gavin Holmes. Looks for sure like there's no way he can get in the end zone. Is the elbow down before the ball breaks the plane? Hard to tell, tell from, from that, that angle. angle. You got to see that straight down the line. The hand goes down. That's okay. Going on the field is a touchdown. The play is under further review. This will be a good angle here. I think he's good. Now, I think the ball is across the plane before the elbow goes down. I agree. Progressive pylon camera with the best angle. All you need to do is get it to the beginning of the goal line. And let's bring in Matt Austin. Matt, have you seen enough to come to a conclusion? Well, not yet. The the goal line cam shot is you just can't really tell uh, if we can mirror the two together where we see it from the back of the end zone so we can see exactly where the ball is. Wow. Uh, and then when his elbow goes to the ground. But well, you've uh, learned a lot about sports television in two years, my friend. That is what <laughs> they're working on in the truck right now. But again, important to remember the ruling on the field was touchdown. So it has to be inconclusive evidence to change that call. That is correct. Nonetheless, regardless of how this plays out, that was an incredible individual effort by Will Shipley. Looked like he was stopped for sure. We talked about him being a fighter, a tough guy, emotional back who gets better the, the longer the game goes. And that was an incredible effort play. Scored two touchdowns in each of After their first three review, games. The ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Yeah. Shipley, Brad Streeter talked to us about his competitiveness. And his desire to get into that end zone on full display there. What an effort. Now BT Potter to tie it with 11-16 to go. Clemson has scored on its last two. Both times to tie it. Look, uh, give it to Shipley. He's going to bounce it outside. Right now, it looks like he might fall in, but the Gavin Holmes with a good high tackle. Trying to get an assist from Dylan Hazen. Kalen Garns, the original contact yep. around the ankle. Then Holmes, he had help coming. Hazen, number 50, was a backup linebacker also in there. This was not going to be denied. Fun guy to watch. Oh my goodness. I'll tell you what, I kind of like his look now too with the beard and the mustache combination rather than just the little skinny mustache. I like, the, I like that look better for Will Shipley. Those that is strength there too. To be on one hand and propel yourself across the line. That's seven straight games now with a rushing touchdown. Started the day one off the national lead in touchdown runs, which was seven. Mohamed Ibrahim of Minnesota, Blake Corum of Michigan. End over end kick from BT Potter. Here's Kevin. Sean, thankfully, we're not interrupting a touchdown. There's a four box here going on on ESPN. Auburn tied up at the moment with Mizzou 14 apiece. Baylor. Right now with a 10-point lead against Iowa State. Number one, Georgia. They're taking it from Kent State. 22 points by the Golden Flashes. 
most given up by that defense. And of course, Mac Brown coming your way, 3:30, Boog. Oh, that's the look of success and Miss Sally's good cooking right there. North Carolina Notre Dame coming your way in less than 40 minutes. Back to you, Sean. All right, thank you guys. Here's Wake Forest now. And a good run on first down. With it long enough, Christian Turner got eight, tackled by Miles Murphy. Well, again, it's, it's a numbers game. The reason there's more running room here in the second half is because Wake Forest has been burnt by the pass game and the pass interference. And it's a first down. Christian Turner skipping through the hole to the 38. Just joining us, Wake Forest has scored the last four possessions, touchdowns. The exception of the one play at the very end of the half. They let the clock run out. They have five touchdown drives, and four of them have been aided by defensive pass interference penalties. It's been a problem for Clemson today, and Wake Forest has just attacked downfield because of it. You either get the completion or you get a penalty. Those percentages are pretty good. You said it. Warren Ruggiero said, we'll take sacks, but we're going to make a lot of big plays down the field. Inside the 25 yard line. Fred Davis now looking around at some of his teammates as if to say, Where's my help? It is a beleaguered secondary. Well, they look a little confused right there. Whether there was going to be help or not, it doesn't matter because Sam Hartman is on target. Both quarterbacks now over 300 yards passing. 46 yard play. Turner didn't get anything there. Single coverage beat right off the jump. It was press coverage and a perfect throw. Immediate separation. Good read by Sam Hartman. And another big catch by Jamal Banks down the field. He has emerged as a star. Six catches matching his single game best in his career. He did that last week against Liberty. He has 141 yards, two touchdowns today. There's a hole for Christian Turner. And the desire to stick with the run paying off now for Wake Forest. Yep. Here's a huge third down. They had 10 yards rushing in the first half. They've had 63 here in the second half. Trying to break a 35 all tie with under nine minutes to go. Hartman. Toward the line, across the line, and down at the 11. And I would think with this much yardage to gain, they'll kick a the field goal, and they will. Yep, yardage and time. You know, there's a lot of game left in this football game. Take the lead, keep the pressure on Clemson. Remember, Clemson's a high-ranked team coming into the game. Here's a brand-new kicker, redshirt freshman Matthew Dennis. Took over from Nick Skiba, the most accurate field goal kicker in college football history. And he's improved on Skiba's numbers because he's perfect. Seven for seven, first try today from 29. Nick Skiba who? All Skiba did was make 89% of his field goals. Matthew Dennis gives them a three-point lead. What a day for Sam Hartman and Jamal Banks. College football on ABC is presented by Arby's. Arby's, we have the meats. And in part by Taco Bell. Vote for this month's Live Moss student section on the Taco Bell app. Sam Harmon's led Wake Forest to scores on their last five drives, with the exception of the one play to end the half. Four touchdowns. Now a field goal. That could be a big stop by the Clemson defense. Clemson has scored on four of its last six possessions. Ivan Moore to kick off. They've been going to the pooch kickoff. Into a very slight breeze. And they're going to pop it up again. This time they'll try to return it. They move Antonio Williams over to that spot. Good move. As Drew Sweeney had been there, he's nowhere near as much a weapon with the ball in his hands as Antonio Williams. 
And A.J. Williams forced him out, but great starting field position. Yeah, that's a great call, Sean. And Davos Sweeney was coaching him up right before the kick. Lined him up exactly where he wanted him to be and said, if they're going to do that, we're going to counter with a little bit more of a weapon there to catch the football. And you think Wake Forest should have been looking, okay, that's yeah. not Drew Sweeney anymore. It's a much more dynamic player. Best starting field position for Clemson. Up and down they go. Neither team has turned it over. We've eight minutes to go. In a classic here in the ACC, Shipley. The short pass and run to the 48 of Wake Forest. And the crowd almost eerily silent here. Tension at Truist Field, hoping that most of them anyway, hoping that Wake Forest can beat Clemson for the first time since 2008. 13 straight losses. Shipley again, lots of running room and a good open field tackle. Mallet Mustafa, Shipley's high school teammate, back in the game with a separated shoulder to make a big stop. Third down and two. Yeah, here he is right here. He's going to come up. He's a fearless safety, good open field tackler. Had 13 tackles a week ago. Injury or not, he's going to get his teammate, high school teammate, on the ground. Third down and two. 13 out of 19. On third down, the Tigers. Uyunglele. First down to the 40-yard line. Tackled around the legs by Dion Bergen, a senior from Kissimmee, Florida. I think if you're Clemson right now, too, you're thinking, let's run some clock, too, right? I mean, we, we've got on the move. They have not been able to stop us here of late. Confident you might be able to get a touchdown. Let's, let's limit the amount of time or the amount of possessions Wake Forest might get again with the football. And the biggest play calls of Brandon Streeter's offensive coordinator career right here with help from Dabo Sweeney. Oh, young on the lay, taken down at midfield. They blitzed Mustafa. Great call by Brad Lambert. A huge sack. Yeah, and what happened was the running back got caught double teaming here. Here's Mustafa. He's going to blitz. That should have been the responsibility of Shipley. But Shipley's helping the tight end. Nobody picks up Mustafa. And a well-timed blitz gets the sack for Wake Forest. Nine-yard loss. First Wake Forest sack of the day. From midfield, 5.35 to go. Clemson with the longest winning streak in the country. Nine in a row back to last year, down by three. Uyunglele flushed. Stopped at the 43-yard line. They'll need 12. On third down, stopped by Ryan Smenda. You got to think about now, B.T. Potter's got a great leg. What is his range? Where do you have to think about getting here on this third down and 12 to give yourself a chance to tie the football game? Potter's made seven field goals in his career, 50-plus. That is the Clemson record. Considered to have the strongest leg in college football. On third down, Brenning stool gets them into more comfortable field goal range. They might not have tried it from the 41-yard line, but they will run Potter out there for about a 52-yard try. That was a good decision by DJ. Just get yardage, give our guy a chance. It's a back-and-forth game. Potter is seven out of nine in his career from 50 plus as long as 52. This one will be put down very close to a 53 yarder. Drew Sweeney the holder. And that one is good. 52 yards officially matching. His career long. That's like a gimme for B.T. Potter.
came back for another year out of Rock Hill, South Carolina. They're so glad he did. Back for the finish, four minutes to go. We're tied at 38, 401 to go. Clemson trying to win its 14th straight against Wake Forest. Wake Forest has lost 62 in a row against top 10 teams. Their only win against number four, Tennessee, back in 1946. And a touchback, it'll start at the 25-yard line. Sam Hartman has had a brilliant game today, but right now with four minutes left, it's it's crunch time. And the number one thing you have to think about with your offense is you've got to stay on schedule. You can't have negative yardage plays and get behind the chains against Clemson's defense. Stay ahead of schedule, continue to take care of the football, and see if you can get your team down the field for another score. Justice Ellison ahead for about six. You see how they, they run the football. It, it's so different. They don't hit the hole quickly. They wait in there. They hang in there behind the line with that mesh. And when they see a little crease, then they pop it out. Again, you mentioned it. 80 yards rushing now. Most of all of that here in the second half. They're going to try it again. Ellison again. Ahead to the 37. All of a sudden, their rushing team. Last time Wake Forest won, 13 years ago, meetings ago, 2008, K.J. Henry's dad, Keith, was on the staff here at Wake Forest under Jim Grove. A couple of days after Coach Henry's team beat Clemson, Tommy Bowden was fired as head coach. And Clemson just a couple of days later and he was replaced by a relatively unknown assistant by the name of Dabo Sweeney KJ Henry has told Dabo many times over the years my dad is responsible for you getting <laughs> the head coaching job and it's been a Hall of Fame head coaching job done by Dabo steady diet of runs here and yeah. it's Ellison and here comes a huge third down he's about a half yard short of the line to gain with two and a half minutes to go and neither coach inclined to use a timeout right now. And see, this is what teams call a four minute offense. They've almost run two minutes off the clock. They got it with 401. They've run the football every play. They know they're not gonna run it all the way down for a score, but they're leaning on the run right now and it's a big third down and one. They bring in an extra offensive lineman, number 52, Spencer Clan. Certainly looks like a run formation. And it is a run and leaning forward with an apparent first down Justice Ellison, although the official at the top of the screen is right on that yellow line. And we're going to have a measurement. The clock now stopped at 1.48 to go. Dave Clawson and Warren Ruggiero know that they're not going to just slam this football down the field for the winning score. They're going to have to get another one or two chunk plays in this drive, but right now, the running game has done its purpose, which is get a couple first downs and use clock. All they need is a field goal, and I think that's the strategy. Take it down in the field goal range with as little time left. I thought live he got the first down. I, I don't think too. it was a great spot, but he still got it. So you've got a minute 48 and all three of your timeouts if you're Wake Forest. So you're in a good position right now. But the throw game is where you've made your hay today, yeah. right? I, I mean, don't know you why you go attacking. completely away no, from those you bombs because you you're completing a lot of them and you're getting a lot of pass interference calls against Clemson and they have a, an inexperienced secondary. So you many of those names that we've called for several years not in the back seven. Yeah, and that's a true of. freshman there. So I mean, they, they still got young guys out there in man coverage situations. Yeah, that might be a little too much on the run. Ellison dumped by Tyler Davis. Neither team stopping the clock here. Loss on the play of about three. Yep, that's that's not staying on schedule. Second and 13 now. Both inside backers blitzed on that play. Good call. Back to the passing attack. Hartman is going down. Back inside the 40. Tyler Davis and Miles Murphy. Wes Goodwin's 
said, I am waiting for Miles Murphy to cut it loose. And he did on that play with Davis. Second and 13, you only have to rush your front four, and you see why the strength of this defense is your defensive line. Huge play on second down. Timeout, Clemson. Big call for new coordinator Wes Goodwin. He is, looks like he's going to play soft zone on this third and long and only rush four, not put his corners on an island. Third down and 17, tie game under a minute to go in regulation. Pressure from behind Hartman. He got it off short of the first down. It's the tight end, Blake Whitehart, to the 48-yard line, perhaps just inside it. Not in field goal range. And a timeout call. Trenton Simpson lost his helmet on the play. He's got to come out. And it's a Clemson timeout. There was no timeout. It's for the injury. We'll see if either coach stops the clock. It's fourth down and five. Simpson, a very important player. He's one of the few with experience in that back seven. So Dave Clawson has a decision to make here, Todd. And I think where the strongest Potter's leg is, yeah. you punt it down in the corner. Clemson's going to have only one timeout left, and you play for overtime. Yeah. I think so. You play for overtime at home. Both quarterbacks have played well. Clemson has called a timeout to prevent a 10-second runoff. This is their third and final timeout. But they know, I think Dabble Sweeney's thinking, they're not going to go for it. So we want time when we get the ball back. They have a kicker with an incredibly strong leg. 30 seconds on the timeout. Longest field goal for Dennis, and it's an admitted pool, obviously. There's Potter, the great long field goal kickers in college football history. This made his eighth from 50 plus a moment ago to tie it. Dennis as long as 46. That was last week against Liberty. Well, the other thing about punting the football here for Wake Forest is you have the opportunity to pin them back better than you would on the kickoffs because Clemson has adjusted to the short kickoff, right? Well, so now and, punting it. You know, if you pin them in there deep, you have all three of your timeouts right. if you want to use them That's on right. defense. Dave Clawson said. From a talent standpoint, this is the most even it's been when Clemson has played Wake Forest in his nine seasons. He said, we need to win a close game. It's a close game. He's terrific in close games, nine and three since the start of 2020 in one score games, including last week when they hung on to beat Liberty. Good punt by Mora. And will be down at the 13 yard line. Clemson only had 10 guys on the field that time. I mean, I'm not sure what exactly they were. Obviously, they were in a safe punt situation, but didn't have enough players on the field. So if you're Dabo Sweeney, you're inside your own 15. You have no timeouts. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to be careless here. You maybe try a screen or something safe early. If you can get one first down, maybe you become a little more aggressive. Your quarterback has made good decisions all day. But this first play and the first first down, how quickly you can get a first down, kind of would dictate that. They have three wide receivers, two to the left of Uli Ungalave. Shipley, they're hoping he could pop one. He's certainly capable of it. Well, if Clemson's going to do that, if you were Dave Klossen, would you think about your timeouts? Yeah, it doesn't look like he wants to. He's right down there by the official trying to make a decision. It doesn't look like he's going to do it either. He's nope. thinking overtime. Dabo's thinking overtime. And they're going to go to overtime. These two great friends, Sweeney and Klossen. They might snap it. They're not going to. Didn't get it off. They were trying and will head to overtime. In the 88th meeting all time.
So many streaks on the line in this critically important ACC game in the top 25. Studio reminding you we've got seven minutes away from Notre Dame at North Carolina. Kickoff of that game scheduled to be on ESPN News as overtime begins in Winston-Salem. Back to you, Sean. Tied at 38 and heading for overtime. Here's the coin toss. All right, gentlemen, we're going to overtime. Each team has one timeout. Okay. And we start the series, we start with the 25, and we play regular football from the 25. Second time through. Start at 25, but you got to go for two. And in the third possession, we're going to start with the three line. Three yard line. Any questions so far? Yes, sir. All right, we've got a coin. That's a head. That's a tails. So there is a tails. All right, what's your call, Tails. Tails, tails is the call. What is the tails? Defense. Comes in against defense, offense. We'd like to play down there. You got it. Wake Forest. Wake Forest. That's KJ Henry. Of course, his dad, a former Wake Forest coach, who made the call on the point toss. Here's how he got there. That was the two-point play that tied it at 28. Clemson led 14 to nothing right out of the gate. These two teams have just answered each other, score for score. Some incredible individual efforts by both teams. A couple clutch kicks. You consider those defensive stops as well when you make them settle for a field goal, but it has been one response after another. No turnovers. The kickers have been perfect. Total yards, 504 now for Clemson, 418 for Wake Forest, and 79 rush yards in the second half. They start from the 25. You almost always choose to go on defense. See what happens. When you go on offense, you know what you need to do. Ellison, the running back. They start with him again. Big hole. Justice Ellison. A nine-yard gain. Miles Murphy took him down. Yeah, they blitzed, and they laid an, an open gap. Two guys went into the same gap. It was a good read by Ellison seeing the daylight. And a nice run on first down. It is the most experienced offensive line in the country. And holding its own today against the Clemson defense that's beaten them up in recent years. Ellison got the first down. I think you got to attack right here. You've run two plays, you got a first down. I think you got to go after these two different corners. You've got Toriano Pride, number 23, a freshman up here. And on the other side, you got Nate Wiggins, number 20. Both have had tough days. Right now, it looks like the safeties are in a position to help both corners. Both corners playing well off. Ellison again. A yard, perhaps. Doesn't look like he got anything. I think Dave Clawson, win or lose, will be asked about this very run-heavy play calling late in the game when they flung it all over the place. Hartman, a career day, five touchdown passes, 329 yards. And part of it is the philosophy has changed defensively for Clemson. When they have two high safeties, that means we're trying to help our corners. And we open this up, up to the run. Ellison found a hole on the left and Powers driving those legs at 5'10", 208. Here comes an enormous third down and three. Jeremiah Trotter made the tackle, the new starter this year, the son of the Outstanding Pro Bowl player for the Eagles, Redskins, and Bucks. He's the middle linebacker now. Huge play. Hartman throws to a wide open receiver for a touchdown. Nobody near A.T. Perry. A bust in that young and inexperienced secondary. It starts with Ellison picking up the blitz. Good pocket for Sam Hartman, then a mix up in the back end of the defense. And Hartman makes it pay for it by finding A.T. Perry. Great job picking up the blitz by Ellison. And then Hartman reading the breakdown in coverage and getting the touchdown throw. The sixth touchdown thrown by Hartman. That is the school record all by himself. He had 
twice previously thrown five. Matthew Dennis with the biggest kick in terms of extra points as a collegian. He has it. He still hasn't missed a kick. PAT or field goal in four college games. It's the school record. Jamie Newman, John Wolford, Riley Skinner among the others who had thrown five touchdown passes for Wake Forest in the game, but nobody had thrown six until today. Bunch formation. They had three wide receivers or two receivers and the tight end. And it just confused this secondary. Here's the blitz pickup, first of all, right in here. And then you've got two receivers and a tight end in a bunch formation. There's three defenders, but two of them go one way, and nobody goes with A.T. Perry to the middle of the field. And now it's Clemson's turn. Oh, young go lay out of the gun with three receivers, and now Shipley goes in motion. He pulls it down, looked like a design run. They weren't fooled. Tyler Williams in the middle of the defense, and Jasheen Davis there as well. Willie Angelale is thrown for 325 and three touchdowns. Antonio Williams has been a little bit of a problem for Wake Forest. Here he is, the first guy in this little jumbo set. Willie Angelale rolls in the direction of that two receiver set up, found Bo Collins, but well short of the first down. Third down and six. It's definitely four down territory. The field goal does them absolutely no good. They have to score a touchdown and kick the extra point to get to a second overtime. And that affects your play calling. You automatically know you've got two downs here. You call a play to get past the sticks, but if you have to dump it off early or if the quarterback has to run, you know you got another down to make the, the yard to gain. Uyunglele lofts it up for Collins! Touchdown, Clemson! Beautiful throw. He beat J.J. Roberts in coverage for a 21-yard score. Clean pocket. And then watch this. Right over the outside shoulder. Gets separation. Again, when the ball's thrown there, the corner has no chance. Both of these quarterbacks have been brilliant. Putting the ball in the right place time after time. Progressive pylon cam shows it again. Perfect throw and catch. Clemson trying to tie this up. They have to have the extra point from Potter. It's good. So. And we'll head to a second overtime. Bo Collins, the touchdown. His former high school teammate and great friend DJ Uyunglele, who's thrown four TDs. Eighty-eighth meeting in this rivalry, and a dandy tied at 45. Under Dabo Sweeney, Clemson 120 and two. When leading by 14 points at any point in the game, they hit 14 nothing today. You have to go back to 2012, the last time they lost in that situation at Florida State. 2010, the other against Auburn. They haven't squandered a 14-point lead in a decade. I'm trying to keep that mark intact. So many streaks on the line, but more importantly, the win for two teams eyeing a conference championship. On the run, Shipley on first and ten. Will Shipley powers down. He will not be denied, as we saw in the short touchdown run and on that run for nine. This had a chance to be about a two-yard loss. Bothroyd has him behind the line of scrimmage, can't get him to the ground. And once Shipley gets his shoulder square, it's more yards. And a flag down. Ball Movement. start. Offense, number 71. Five yard penalty. Second down. Jordan McFadden, the grad student. We talked to Brandon Streeter. He said, I have no worries with him. He's terrific. That's a costly penalty. They're 10th for 120 yards. Second and six. They score a touchdown here with the new rules this year. You heard Jeff Heaser, the referee, explain they have to go for two. And Wake Forest is guaranteed a possession. Oh, 
Uyunglele, single coverage, man, breaking free. Collins couldn't make a one-handed catch. And there is no flag on the play. Well, Collins made one of these one-handed catches against Wake Forest last year. J.J. Roberts, the coverage. No, there's no call because, if anything, the receiver was holding off the defender. I, I don't think that's just both of them had a hand on each other. Nobody impeded each other from the catch. Just wasn't able to come down with it. Matt Austin agrees with you, our referee. From the 22, third down and six. Oh, young on the leg. Faked it to Shipley. He throws to the end zone. Caught! Davis Allen. There was plenty of hand fighting in the end zone with Mustafa in coverage. Allen, another touchdown catch. Again, the athleticism of the big tight end, six foot six, 250, going against Mustafa, who's 5'10 and 200. It's an intentional back shoulder throw to a tight end running down the seam. It's perfect coverage, but you throw that ball high into the opposite shoulder, it's impossible for a smaller guy to defend. Just a perfect placed ball by DJ Uyunglele. The coach has told us Allen might be the best blocking tight end they've had during the Dabo Sweeney year, and he's more than dependable as a receiver. He has been today. Two touchdown catches for the senior from Calhoun, Georgia. Now they must try for two. Put it on the left hash mark again. Shipley on the right hip of DJ Uwe Ungolay. Career high five touchdown passes. Uwe Ungolay has it batted down. Kobe Turner, the huge play. Second time he's done that today. He's nowhere near the quarterback. He's not going to get close to a sack, but he is going to get a deflection. He's kind of stymied at the line of scrimmage, but he keeps his eyes on DJ and times his jump and gets a big paw up there to knock it down. Here's Kevin DeGandhi. Sean, an update from the Bronx. Aaron Judge, fourth that bat, a home run shy of 61, and this is how it went down. A check swing in a 5-5 game with 2-2 two -two count, and he's called out. So Judge, four at-bats, 0 for 3 with a walk, still sitting on home run number 60, chasing history. Back to you. All right, thank you, Kevin. Here, Wake Forest needs the touchdown to tie the game, and then they'd have a try for two to win the game. So they have to score at least six. They stick to the ground game. And Ellison is dropped. Sean, they stick to the run game because the numbers say stick to the run game. However, Razee, right in the middle of this defense, just makes a man's play. I mean, there's only five guys in the box, but Razee just beats his man to the line of scrimmage, or Tyler Davis. Hartman, deflected pass in the general direction of Whitehart. And that was Brzee, who batted it out of the air. These two guys on the inside both will be playing on Sundays. They did not play a week ago. There's the Brzee family. They had memorial service for Brian's 15-year-old sister, Ella, this past Tuesday. You can imagine what an emotional day this is. You saw it in the dad, Rich. Third down and 10. Hartman. Running for his life, runs out of bounds at the 22-yard line. They'll give him the 21, pursued by Barrett Carter, the speedy sophomore linebacker, another new starter. And it is a must-have fourth and six for Dave Clawson. Or the streak goes to 14 straight wins for Clemson over Wake Forest. And again, soft coverage with safety help. They're not going to get beat in man-to-man. -man. Hartman throws it into double coverage, knocked down by Wiggins, terrorized most of the day, and an emotional win for the Clemson Tigers.
closest Dave Clawson and Wake Forest had come in his eight previous matchups was 14 points. He knew he had a better chance today. They had it. They couldn't get it. Dabo Sweeney wins again. He's with Molly. Coach. Defensive tackle Brian Brzee with a crucial defensive play in that second overtime. What was it like watching this game come down to your defense? Well, I'm 52. I just turned 62 today. Unbelievable. Uh, first of all, man, I, I, this is what a top 15 game should look like. And, and Wake Forest, I knew, I told our team, this is, this ain't going to be easy. It's going to come down to the last play because that's who they are as a program. Their kids played and reflected the character and the leadership of Dave Clawson and his staff. Man, this is a this this team right here has got a ton of freaking heart. They're the Atlantic's champs. We, they won it. So, but our guys hung in there. You saw a lot of football character out of our team tonight. It was really, really ugly in the passing game. And really, in one spot, we just we did a poor job in coverage and give them credit. But when it came down to that last play, <laughs> we made it. And, and I'm so proud of our offense. You know, uh, we'll get this defense fixed. But man, this offense, our quarterback, our, our, all the big plays, they never flinched. And you know, that's what it's all about, man. I'm just really proud of them. They grew up a little bit tonight. Again, we're, we're a work in progress. The name of the game's to win. It's been a long time since so we've got an overtime game. But if you're gonna be, if you're gonna win a division championship, a league championship, you gotta be able to win on the road. And to be able to win in overtime on the road with a lot of adversity, that shows the character and the heart of our young men. I'm really proud of them. Speaking of character and heart, how about the fact that one of the most crucial defensive plays came down to Brian Brzee? Yeah, Brian, you know, listen, his family's here. I didn't get a chance to see him before the game, but it's been a crazy week, and I'm proud of Brian. It's been a tough time for him. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm sure his family, they needed a little joy. And hopefully, uh, Hopefully they can go celebrate tonight and enjoy this game. Congratulations on the win. What a win for Clemson. They took the lead. Great body position by Davis Allen. Post up and score the go-ahead touchdown in the second overtime of that secondary. Attacked all day long, but not very often late in the game. Emotional win for Brazil. Rest in peace, Ella. Clemson wins 51-45 in two overtimes. Clemson